Hello friends. Welcome to Muse Fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was the heir to six paths inherited the most exalted Rinnegan. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. An orange glow fills the night sky as fires blaze in Konoha. The bodies of fallen shinobi litter the battleground, and over it all an fifty-story tall fox with nine tails flailing about. Its red slitted eyes are locked on the red-orange toad with a blue haori and a yakuza knife at its waist. On top of the toad's head stands a figure with spiky blonde that is short in the back with two long bangs framing his face on either side. He is wearing a white cloak with the kanji for Yandaimi Hokage, and yellow flash, on it, basic shinobi pants taped at the shins, and a sweatshirt with a junin flak jacket over top. This was the Yandaimi Hokage, Namikaze Minato. In Minato's arms there is a bundle. All right boss. I need you to deal with the fox while I make the hand signs. The figure says. Are you sure Minato, do you really have to use the Shiki Fujin? The toad asks. I'm sure Gamabunta, it's the only way, I'll seal half its power into myself and the other half into my son Naruto, said Minato before continuing. I have a feeling that he will need it in the future. Something was not right with that masked man, and I don't know about you but I can think of only one man with a Sharingan that can control the Kyubi. Do you see the look in its eyes? Asked Minato. Gamabunta squinted his eyes and looked at Kyubi intently. Yes I see it now, its eyes are vacant, like it's under a genjutsu, it's being controlled. Gamabunta concluded. Just as Gamabunta finished his sentence the Kyubi body shuddered, and its eyes cleared up. It looked about itself in confusion before locking its gaze back on Gamabunta and the Hokage a look of desperation and urgency in its eyes before it recognized what Minato was holding and what that must mean. Its gaze hardened and filled with determination as it began to speak in a booming gravelly voice. Well Ninjin we both know what you intend to do, so get on with it before I lose this brief control I have gained. It said in a serious tone. Minato gave a short nod, very well, Gamabunta. When the sealing is complete I want you to get Naruto to Serutobi, I left him instructions he'll know what to do. Minato ordered. Don't worry Gaki I will. Gamabunta assured him. Kashina Chan, forgive me for what I am about to do, and protect Naruto, shower him with all the love you can give him, as only a mother can, do your best to make the people see him as the hero he is, I will always love you both, Minato thought as he began a complex chain hand signs. Namikaze Mansion unbeknownst to Minato. Inside their home, Uzumaki Namikaze Kashina was coming up with a plan, she could feel her life force fading slowly, she had at best half a day before she would die from the extraction of the Kyubi, had it happened at any time besides after childbirth it might have been fine, but that wasn't the case. She knew that she had to do something to help her child in any way she could. Slowly a plan came to mind. The plan was certainly not perfect, but it would have to do. It was necessary to protect her baby, and anybody who knew anything about mothers knows they would do anything for their babies. Kashina hurriedly began writing an immensely complex seal formula she had been working on for years. She came up with the idea after meeting old Kunoichi from Suna, and a special jutsu she had come up with. Finally done with the formula, she sealed the piece of paper into a storage seal on her wrist. After doing that, she went to her room she shared with Minato. She hurried over to her dresser where a picture hung. She took a moment to admire the picture. The picture was of Minato's team and her together, before things had begun to go wrong and they lost Obito and Rin all in the same year. To the left is Kanako, at this time she still had her regular eyes, she had an lazy expression in place. To the right is Obito, with his usual goofy smile in place. In the center is Rin, she was smiling happily leaning down and hugging her from behind as Kashina, sticking her tongue out at the camera. She was wearing her Anbu uniform without the mask, her long red hair is framing her slightly round face, and her violet eyes were shining. And finally is Minato, his hand is on Kashina's shoulder and he is wearing a standard Konoha Janin uniform. Brushing away the tears that had started running down her face, Kashina swung the picture away from the wall, revealing a safe with a blood seal. Kashina quickly used chakra to sharpen her tooth and bit her thumb just enough to draw blood, she proceeded to swipe it across the seal. She reached in and brought out a file of blood. Now to Anbu confinement cells, she muttered to herself. Having found what she was searching for, she hurried out of the room and to the front door. As she walked out of the mansion, 
her thoughts were whirling and she had a sense of trepidation about what she was going to do. Grand uncle, please forgive me for what I am about to do, but I am afraid for the good of my family, and our clan's future, I must use your most forbidden jutsu, she thought. With Minato after five minutes the Hokage completed the final hand seal, and a tall robed figure with an oni face, wearing a black haori with spiritual beads around its neck, and a sword clenched between its teeth appeared behind him. Why have you summoned me mortal? The figure asked. My apologies Shinigami-sama, but I required your aid in sealing the Kaiubi into my son. Minato said imploringly. Well we know someone who's not going to be nominated for father of the year, the Shinigami thought with a little humor. Very well, I assume you know the price? The death god asked. Hi Shinigami-sama I do, I want to seal the yin half of its chakra as well as its body inside your stomach, and the yang into my son with the shiki fujin and an eight trigram seal on top of it, said Minato. It shall be as you say mortal, replied the death god. The shinigami reached an arm forward and it shot through the bodies of Minato and Naruto, and towards the Kaiubi. Kaiubi struggled briefly so it could speak before being sealed. I shall remember your bravery ninjin, and rest assured, when I deem him ready, I shall tell the boy what transpired this night, and about the masked man with that cursed monkey eye. The Kaiubi vowed. Arigato Kaiubi sama, I am going to add something into the seal, you shall find out what I mean soon enough, declared Minato. Very well ninjin, now complete the sealing before I fall under the genjutsu once more. Commanded the Kaiubi. As it said this it ceased its struggles and allowed its soul to be dragged from its body, the soul shot into Naruto's stomach where an eight trigram seal with a swirl in the middle appeared, before it continued to Minato where a similar seal appeared. Fuinjutsu. Shiki Fujin, Fuin. Exclaimed before the Shinigami sliced through the soul and swallowed it, it glanced at Naruto before saying one last thing before it left, this child will be interesting to watch, he carries a power never seen in a human since that man. It declared as it disappeared leaving a confused Yandaimi. Shaking off those words Minato looked down at his son as he felt his life drain away slowly. Naruto, I wish I could be there with you and your Ka-chan as you grow up. Teach you to be an awesome shinobi, watch as you become a genin. Then Chunin and Janin, and maybe even Hokage, I want to be there to see you find a beautiful girl. Are several more likely, after all, you will most likely be put in the CRA. I wonder if he and Kanako Chan will end up together, he added to himself with a slightly perverted giggle worthy of his sensei, and give me a few grandchildren to spoil, but I'm afraid I won't be able to, so I guess it's just gonna be you and Ka Chan, make sure to take care of her for me, and remember your two San loved you, he finished as his eyes started to close. Bunta try to get a hold of the arrow sensei of mine, Kashina is gonna need help with the council and I don't know if that old monkey Serutobi is going to be able to do it alone. He said weakly as his eyes closed and his breathing became even more labored. You got it Gaki, don't worry he'll be in good hands. Promised Gamabunta. Thanks boss. I think this is it so listen up. I know what Kaiubi insinuated when it talked about the cursed Sharingan controlling it, but it's not the person he was thinking of, tell Jiraiya. It was the Uchiha who lost his light in the elder days he'll figure out who I mean. Now I think I'm gonna take a nice long rest. He trailed off as he finished. Naruto, Kashina. Take care, I love you, was his last thought as his breathing stopped his face relaxed into a peaceful smile. And so passes the Yandaimi Hokage, you were a great summoner Gaki, I'll miss ya. Thought Gamabunta before his thoughts shifted to the blonde bundle on top of his head, better get this Gaki to Serutobi, Uzumaki Naruto, I'll remember you. Inside the seal behind its cage inside the seal the Kaiubi was going over the memories left by the Hokage when suddenly it sensed something deep within its host. So, you hold the power of that man, you shall be interesting to watch Naruto, it said to itself before lowering its head and falling asleep, but before it could lay its head down it felt in sudden intense chakra spike. This chakra, Kashina Chan. It questioned before it got a better feel for the jutsus being used. Ah so you're using that jutsu, Nadi Nadi Kushi Chan, things will be interesting indeed. The fox grumbled it then began searching the seal to find what it was Minato meant, what it found shocked it and could think of only one thing to say, well this is, unexpected. With Kashina, outside training ground 44, 10 minutes earlier. Kashina had just finished the preparations for the jutsu when she felt something, and became certain Minato had finished the ceiling, she let a single tear fall from her eye before stealing her resolve and began running through hand signs. 
Kachiyose no jutsu. Edo Tensai. She shouted while slamming her hands on the ground. A coffin rose up from the ground. The lid fell forward as the occupant became visible. Stepping out of the coffin, the person looked around before their eyes locked on Kashina. Kashina Wanichin, was it you who summoned me? Questioned the figure. Hi, I did, I summoned you because I need your help. The Kayubi was ripped from the seal, and even now Minato is sealing it inside our son. Minato hopes the villagers will see him as a hero, but I know better. With both of us gone, Serutobi Ojisan will have no choice but to hide his identity, and word of his status will become public knowledge whether he likes it or not, so I wish to completely revive you, because of the cost of the seal, you will be placed in stasis for six and a half years, at which point your body will start to slowly release from stasis, then it will take another to use your own chakra to slowly artificially restore you to perfect health. Explained Kashina, will you do it? Kashina asked worriedly. The figure didn't even pause to think. Of course I'd be delighted to Wanichin, I just wish you could be there to see him grow up. What is his name by the way? The person asked curiously. His name is Naruto, and he will look like a chibified Minakun, although I suspect he might have some of his grandfather's features mixed in too. Kashina laughed. The figure couldn't help but giggle as well. Very well Wanichin, let's do this, the sooner I'm in stasis the sooner I can see Naru chan the figure said excitedly. All right you'll be transported to the Namikaze mansion when it's done and I will have sent a scroll to Serutobi Ojisan explaining my actions," said Kashina as she pricked a finger and swiped it across a summoning seal Minato had given her to summon messenger toads. A puff of smoke erupted and from it appeared a small toad. Sup Kashina-sama. What's the occasion? It questioned. I need you to deliver this to Serutobi Ojisan for me, she said holding out the scroll. Sure thing, it said before puffing out of existence. Kashina turned back to the figure before taking out the seal and building up the last of her chakra. All right, let's do this databane, she said. Naru Chan. Ka Chan is sorry she couldn't be there for you, but she is doing everything she can to protect you, grow up to be a handsome young man, make Tu Chan, Ka Chan, and your clans proud, don't let that arrow Kyofu corrupt you, and when you discover your legacy, remember who you are. She thought as she slammed the seal into the figure's stomach. Hokage Tower. Four hours later we find a weary Serutobi Hirazan sitting in the Hokage's office with a bundle on the desk in front of him. Damn it Minato. Why did you have to die you selfish bastard, now I have to take this job again, I'm too old for this shit, he thought to himself as he gazed at Naruto. I do not have as much confidence as Minato did that Naruto will be treated as the hero he is, I know the life of a Jinchuruki, it is best if the public does not know of his status, but I shall still have to inform the council, he pondered to himself his thoughts turned to Kashina's scroll. And you are even worse Kashina, I could swear you were busting into hysterics knowing how much paperwork it would cause, he mused. He stopped as in female Anbu with a wolf mask shunshined into the room. The woman had messy silvery colored hair that framed her face, kinda like current eyes, the hair went down past her shoulder blades. She had a figure that most kunoichi would kill for, even with the Anbu armor obe you could tell she had C-cup breasts, her waist was slim and led to curvy hips and her heart-shaped butt, obvious due to the tight anbu pants she wore, and long legs that seemed to go on and on. As she bowed to the Hokage, through the eye holes of the anbu mask two fully matured three Tomo Sharingan eyes. She then spoke in an angelic solemn voice. Hokage-sama, the council is assembled per your request, and there is confirmation, Kashina Nichan's body was found near the forest of death, what was she doing that she broke off as she noticed the bundle on the table. Is that him? Is that Sensei's son? She asked in a slightly more happy tone than he had been using. Hi Kanako chan, it is. This here is Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto, replied the Sand Dame cheerfully. May I hold him Hokage sama, and can I ask what will happen to him now that Kashina has died? Kanako queried in a hopeful tone, it almost broke the Sand Dame's heart knowing he would have to crush that hope. Hi, you may hold him Kanako chan. And as for what will happen to him that remains to be seen, most likely he will be placed in an orphanage," replied the Sandame. Kanako, who had by now lifted her mask revealing that she was no older than 13 or 14 years old, she had an angelic heart-shaped face that was hardly marred by the vertical scar over her left eye and was holding Naruto her luscious red lips pulled down at the corners in a frown. But Hokage-sama could I not take care of him, he is Sensei's son after all," said Kanako 
The Sandame sighed knowing what he said next might break her heart. I'm afraid not Kanako-chan, with Kashina gone it is vital that no one knows who little Naruto's father is. If Iwa were to find out who he is I don't know if Naruto would be safe. And if you were to adopt him, with that and his looks, rumors will spread, the Hokage paused as he saw Kanako's downcast look, however, I suspect that rumor of his Jinchuriki status may get out, in that case I will assign your Anbu squad to protect and watch over him, and when he enters the academy, I shall make you a regular Jonin so that when he graduates you can have him on your Genin squad, is this acceptable Kanako-chan? he asked. Hi I guess that will have to do Hokage-sama, will you be taking Naruto to the meeting Hokage-sama? Kanako queried. Yes I shall, they will want to see him and the clan heads will probably wish to see the seal. He sighed. With that he took Naruto from Kanako before Shun shining out of the room, Kanako replaced her mask before following. Council room The council room was a large circular room with a long raised table for the three parts of the council, on the right of the Hokage's seat, the civilian and elder councils were grouped together, on the left sat the Shinobi council. The Elder Council was made up of the Sandame's former teammates, Yutatane Kaharu and Maitokado Homura, as well as the old Warhawk and, former, commander of Root, Shimura Danzo. The Civilian Council was made up of various merchants and shop owners, they along with the Elders dealt with the civilian side of the village affairs. The Shinobi Council was made up of various clan heads, as well as the head of Anbu, and various elite Jonin. the Shinobi Council handled all things that dealt with ninja affairs, and held a deep dislike for the civilian council who were always trying to stick their noses in shinobi affairs. Inside the council room, the civilian and shinobi councils were talking amongst themselves, wondering what this meeting was about. All heads turned as the council chamber's doors opened and the sandame walked in carrying a baby wrapped in a blanket, he was flanked by the female wolf masked Anbu. Serutobi strode to the Hokage's seat and sat down. He waited for the room to quiet before speaking. As I'm sure you've all heard by now, our dear Yandaimi died giving his life to defeat the Kyubi no Kitsune. He started before continuing knowing his next words would cause an uproar. What you don't know is that he did this to seal the Kyubi into a child using the Shiki Fujin. He had barely gotten the words out before half of the civilian council started yelling that they needed to kill the child to finish the demon before it can take over and escape. This continued for several minutes, all the while oblivious to the killing intent, an. From now on this will be key, leaking off the shinobi in the room, especially from the Hokage and female wolf masked Anbu, which seemed even more potent than the Hokages, simultaneously all the male shinobi council who knew her paled. Uh oh she is pissed, they thought at the same time. They were interrupted by the voice of the Hyuga clan head Hyuga Hiyashi. Would I be correct in assuming that child you are holding is the jailer of the Kyubi Hokage Sama? He asked putting extra emphasis on the word jailer which no one failed to notice, but before the sandame was able to reply a screeching voice cut in. Hey I Don, T remember US selecting him to be Hokage again? Screeched one Haruno Sakuna, a pink-haired banshee who no one really knew why she was on the council, her high-pitched tone made everybody else flinch. The Nara clan head Nara Shikaku was the one to reply. And who else would you suggest? With Minato gone that leaves only a few viable candidates, Sandame Sama. Jiraiya or Tsunade of the Sanin. And Hitaki Kanako. He paused here as he saw the female wolf masked Anbu stiffen, he smirked slightly before he continued in the same bored tone. Let's start with Tsunade, she hasn't been in this village for a few years now and is unlikely to return, so she's out. Next is Jiraiya. He would be a good choice if we didn't need his spy network at the point in time to safeguard against other villages taking advantage of our temporary weakness, so he's out as well. Finally is Kanako, and while she is powerful and a genius, she is way too young at 13 years old. This leaves us with only Sandame Sama, he is our best and only choice so please sit down and be quit being so troublesome you troublesome woman. He finished with a yawn. Sakuna was seething but could not refute his logic so she sat down with a huff. Seeing that being out of the way Serutobi turned to Hiyashi to answer his question. To answer your question Hiyashi. Yes this is indeed the Kyubi's jailer. Uzumaki Naruto. He started before pausing upon seeing several of the clan heads stiffen at the name. Hiyashi and the Inazuka clan head Inazuka Sume in particular regarded Naruto with a more critical eye as if searching for something. Inazuka Sume was a feral looking woman of about 24 years old. She had spiky dark brown hair with two red fang-like markings on her cheeks, slightly slitted eyes and larger than average fangs. 
Overall she was a beautiful and wild-looking woman. I wonder if that's Kushi Chan's pup. He certainly has Minato's hair. She thought to herself. Hayuga Hiyashi was having similar thoughts, he was a regal-looking man with the typical Hayuga stoicism. As I was saying this is Uzumaki Naruto and he is now an orphan, the Yandaimi's final wish was that he be seen as a hero for keeping the Kayubi locked away, he said gauging everybody's reactions. The shinobi seemed to accept this, but some of the civilians seemed to be plotting the child's demise or some such nonsense. After the Sandame had finished Sume decided to speak up. Hokage-sama, if I may ask, what is going to happen to the pup now? If I may make a suggestion, the Inazuka clan would be happy to adopt him. She said with a hint of hope in her voice. Before the Hokage answered a couple other people decided to speak up. The Hyuga would also like to adopt him Sandame sama Said Hiyashi, anyone who realized who Naruto was were not surprised by the first two, but the next person to speak up surprised them a bit. Uchiha Fugaku was an arrogant looking man and clan head of the Uchiha clan. That must be Kashina and Minato's kid, I don't really care. But Makoto wouldn't forgive me if I didn't at least try to adopt him, not to mention he could be a valuable asset to the Uchiha, he thought before speaking up. The Uchiha clan would as well, he said. Serutobi narrowed his eyes at that last one. Before he could answer them a round of protests came from the civilians. Having enough of this Serutobi turned to the clan heads before answering. I'm afraid not. To let Naruto be adopted by one clan would give them a bit too much power. He said causing the civilians to smirk and getting understanding looks from Hiyashi and Fugaku, Sum's look was less understanding but she left it alone. Seeing an opportunity and having stayed silent till now, Danzo decided to make his move. Hokage-sama, if I may give a suggestion, the boy could be a valuable asset to the village. Perhaps you should give the boy to me. He said. The Sandame's former teammates nodded their heads in support to this idea. The Shinobi Council looked at Danzo suspiciously while worrying the Hokage might accept. They had nothing to worry about as Serutobi had no intention to grant his request. No Danzo, the child will be placed into an orphanage, I will not have him turned into a mindless weapon. He said sternly. Now as for the final piece of business, I hereby decree that anyone besides Naruto to reveal his status as a Jinchuriki to him or anyone else will be sentenced to death, that is all. He said dismissing the council. It took less than a week for Naruto's status to leak out. Things were okay for him in the orphanage for the first four years until the kindly matron who was an old friend of Serutobi's died, leaving him to a younger matron who loathed him. He was promptly told to get out and stay out demon. His Anbu guards managed to find him a couple weeks later living on the streets. Kanako had to be restrained from going and killing the young matron by five Anbu after she found Naruto on the streets. After that Serutobi gave him his own apartment and a weekly stipend from his parents' sizable bank account, though Naruto didn't know that, it did little good as people wouldn't let him into most shops, or would overcharge him, he could only eat at a little ramen stand called Ichiraku's. Over the next two and a half years Naruto would suffer several beatings when someone would manage to distract his Anbu guards, but they always managed to stop it before the civilians got too far. Time skip. Seven years later, apartment building in Konoha. The sun rose slowly over Konohagakure no Sado, it shines through the shades of a rundown apartment complex, in particular a little blonde haired boy's room, he was blissfully unaware that his today his life would change forever. The boy stirred as the light invaded his eyelids. Naruto tried to ignore the annoyance that was the sun, but it wouldn't go away. He finally got out of bed grinning when he realized what today was. It was his birthday. I can't wait to see Inu Nichan, Weasel Nissan, and Neko Nichan. I wonder if they got me anything. Maybe I can get Inu Nichan to treat me to ramen. Naruto was short for his age standing at just under four feet. He had sun-kissed blonde that was spiky and ocean blue eyes. Naruto walked out of his bedroom and into the bathroom. He dropped his sleeping clothes on the floor and hopped into the shower. The hot water felt good as it ran down his small frame. Through the fog his mind went into he started to drift to the dreams he had been having recently. Always the same one. Flashback a rapid sequence of images flash through his field of vision, fight scenes that seemed to be going in fast forward, except the scenes seemed to go backwards in time, it had started off with a red-headed woman who seemed familiar, it tugged at his mind as if he should know her, she was wearing a standard Konoha Anbu attire, with a blood-red cloak over it, she seemed to be standing in a training field with Konoha in the background. She wielded a beautiful katana, but then she seemed to say something and it changed, 
the blade dissolved into Sakura petals. Then the scene started to shift. All of them depicted crimson-haired warriors both male and female who were wielding various katana, but then the katana would change form and the battle would end, and another warrior would appear. It continued, and the attire of the warriors and the katana the wielded kept shifting. The landscape shifted as did the village the battles took place in. It had started off as Konoha but slowly but surely that shifted, it revealed at first a simple forest, that shifted to barren wasteland, and so on and so on, it finally ended on a view of a strange city in ruins, but you could clearly see that it used to be more advanced than Konoha. Unlike the other scenes there was more than one person here. There had to be hundreds of people, out front was solitary figure that had orange hair, across his back was a huge cleaver as long as his body, he was very tall. He was dressed similarly to everyone, they wore a white shataji with a black kasode over it, they also wore black, split-legged hakama, a white obi, and on their feet they wore white tabi with waragi. Overall, Naruto thought it was a pretty bad ass style. He noticed that there were 13 people in the front that also had on white haori. In the center of them was a hunched old man with a ridiculous beard, he was leaning on a stick of wood with a large knobby head, then for the first time he realized that these people looked war-torn, like they had just been through battle. Suddenly the people all dissolved into blue particles and flowed into the man. Then something strange happened, his hair changed color and became pitch black with highlights of red the same as the warriors he had seen before, but when he turned to the side his eyes which Naruto could have sworn were brown, had turned a metallic purple even in the sclera, and his pupil was dot-like and surrounded by concentric black circles. A shifting sound came from some rubble and a strange sound could be heard. Clack 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 the teenager couldn't resist the urge and face palmed before muttering to himself, of course it's him, he always shows up at the strangest times. Naruto had no idea what he was talking about until man that was dressed strangely came into view, he had messy blonde hair framing his face with a little bit of chin stubble, and he had on a green and white striped hat, green shirt and pants, topped by a black coat with a white diamond pattern, the source of the sound became obvious by the wooden geta on his feet. Well Ichigo it seems you've been busy, love the hair. He said in a lazy, joking voice. Ah shut it Kazuki, this isn't the time for jokes, Ichigo exclaimed irritably. Suddenly Kazuki seemed to get serious, you're right, it's not, well come along then, he said in a much more serious tone as if a switch had been flipped. The two men left and then the scene changed once more and Naruto was in a temple laying there was an old man with white hair and those same eyes, with a shock he realized that this was Ichigo. He was surrounded by nine creatures. They were all strange and had a varying amount of tail from one to nine. There was a tanuki with a single tail that appeared to be made of sand, some weird half dolphin half horse thing with five tails, but it was the last one that shocked him, it was the Kayubi no Kitsune, the nine-tailed fox. Just then Ichigo spoke. My children, my time in this world is nearly done. Soon I shall pass so gather close and listen to my last words, he said. Hi to San, the Biju chorused. The scene then shifted again to show Konoha in the background, but there were buildings destroyed and fires raged, but most prominent was the giant toad facing off against a huge nine-tailed fox, on top of the toad's head was a blonde-haired man with a white haori on, on the back were the kanji for, Yandaimi Hokage, and, yellow flash, in his arms was a small bundle. Suddenly there was a big flash that disappeared into the bundle in the man's arms. The scene flashed for a final time, and suddenly Naruto was in a dark forest clearing, and standing in front of him was Ichigo as he had appeared when he first transformed, his strange purple eyes fixed right on Naruto. Naruto, you have seen the events unfolding before you, but you do not yet understand them, this is fine for now, but soon all will become clear, farewell my descendant, and no matter what, remember who you are and why you fight. Ichigo said as everything began to fade. Desperately Naruto tried to speak before he disappeared. Wait. What do you mean? He asked pleadingly. Ichigo simply smiled before he disappeared. Flashback and sighing, he turned off the water and climbed out of the shower. After he had dried off, he dressed in a pain black t-shirt with a red swirl on the shirt, he also had on beige shorts with blue ninja sandals. After he was finished getting dressed he rushed into the kitchen to get some breakfast. He waited impatiently for the water to boil for his ramen. When it was finally done he quickly poured the water into the container and waited a few minutes. After he was done waiting he wolfed down the ramen, and rushed out his door Naruto hurried down the streets, rushing through the crowds and ignoring the yells of, watch demon brat, 
and go away and die from the villagers. With Kakimi, training ground seven, memorial stone. Hitaki Kanako was dressed in her Anbu attire. The only modification was the fact that she, like Nako, wore extremely tight fitting pants that hugged every curve of her lower body. She was staring at the memorial stone, or more specifically, three names in a horizontal line on the stone Namakaze Minato, Uchiha Obito, Nohara Aran. Minato Sensei, Obito, Rin Chan, you wouldn't believe how much things have changed in this village since you passed on, Kanako thought. People scorn and spit on your son Sensei. I know you, Obito and Rin Chan would be as outraged as I at how they treat Naruto kun. I wish things had turned out differently. I've made so many mistakes in my life. If only I'd been strong enough to save you, Obito and Rin Chan, you would be here to help out Naruto kun with me. She continued in her head sorrowfully. Obito, I think you might get a kick out of seeing just how much the arrogance of the majority of the Uchihas has grown. I can only think of three that you would like Makoto sama, Sayuri chan, and Itachi. You'd especially like Itachi, he acts all cold to the other Uchihas, little do they know that it's just Uchihas he acts this way towards, and he loathes Fugaku Teme, seriously how did Makoto Sama end up with a prick like him? She finished that line of thought with an incredulous expression under her Anbu mask. It's too bad Sasuke took after Fugaku Teme, she thought with a sigh. Suddenly she was broken from her reverie when she heard Naruto running towards her shouting. With Naruto Naruto was ecstatic. He finally found Inu Nichan and he couldn't wait to spend the whole day with her if he could, after all, Hokage Gigi usually gave her a day off of duty on his birthday so she could spend it with him, Neko Nichan and Weasel Nisan usually got part of the day off as well so he could see them too. It made him slightly sad that he had never seen their faces as they couldn't remove their masks, but he felt better when he once asked Inu Nichan, he recalled that memory fondly. Flashback one year earlier, hey Inu Nichan. Can I ask you a question? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I wouldn't want to bother you. Naruto said shyly. After all, he had only met his Anbu protectors in person six months ago. He didn't want his new Nichans and his new Nissan to leave because he asked too many annoying questions. Kanako looked up from her ever present orange book that none of her female friends could believe she read. Well, Naruto kun, I believe you just did ask a question, but yes, I wouldn't mind answering a question, I suppose. She said with a giggle in her melodious voice. W well, I was wondering how come you, Nako Ne, and Weasel Ni never take off your masks around me. I mean, you and Nako Ne must be really pretty under those masks, so why hide your faces around me, even when no one else is around? He said, completely oblivious that what he just said could be construed as flirting. Kanako gave an almost unnoticeable blush that nevertheless went unnoticed under her mask. Well Naruto kun, to Anbu. Our identities are closely guarded secrets, very few and only those we trust may see our faces whilst we are on duty, she started, oblivious to the expression of hurt and anguish on Naruto's face as she said, those we trust may see our faces, suddenly Naruto spoke in a choked tone that made her immediately snap her head in his direction to see his expression, and the sheer pain reflected in it. SS so why why you don't t trust me? He said while tears started to well in his eyes, Kanako realizing her mistake, couldn't bear the look of pain and anguish he was giving, so she quickly wrapped him in a tight hug and whispered in his ear soothingly. No Naruto kun. That's not it at all. She said forcefully, surprising him before she continued. All Anbu are usually ninja of renowned skill, even before we join Anbu, and especially after, so if someone were to find out our identity that was an enemy, they would find those closest to us and use them to get to us, we never want this to happen. She said in a fierce but gentle tone before continuing, her tone taking on a slightly fragile edge. I could not bear for something to happen to you. I have been forced to bury my teammates, and my sensei in my lifetime, in less than two decades I have lost nearly every person that was precious to me, except you, so I will not let anything happen to you because of me, I don't know what I would do if I lost you too Naruto-kun, does that answer your question? Naruto was shocked at the sudden hug, and even more so at the words she spoke and the emotions they conveyed. He relaxed into the hug. Hi, Inu Nichan, it does, and thank you. Thank you for caring about me so much. He said as the tears in his eyes finally broke, but now they were tears of joy. Flashback that had been the first time he had gotten a hug aside from the Hokage, and the first time anyone had said they cared for him in such an emotional way. Breaking out of his musings, he called out to the beautiful Anbu as he ran over to her. Hey, Inu Nichan, how's it going? 
Kanako turned around as he ran towards her and smiled underneath the Anbu mask. Hello Naruto-kun. How are you doing? She asked in amusement. Great. Do you know what today is? He asked excitedly. Hum. Let me think, Hokage's day? She said in a mock thoughtful tone. Nope, he said quickly. Then is it buy two get one free on Icha Icha at my favorite bookstore? She said in the same tone. No, he said. Oh then it must be your birthday Naruto-kun, she exclaimed excitedly. Yep, he replied. Kanako reached into her pouch and pulled out a wrapped book, she then handed it to Naruto. Here you go happy birthday Naruto-kun, I'll take you out for ramen for lunch but for now why don't you go start reading that while we wait Nako and Weasel, she suggested. Yada. I'll do that Inu Nichan, thanks for the book. Naruto exclaimed happily before running off to read the book while sitting with his back to the tree across the clearing. Still standing by the memorial stone Kanako pulled another wrapped book from her pouch and tore off the covering. Finally I can read that limited edition signed copy of Icha Icha Tactics Jiraiya Sama sent me, she thought with as much excitement as Naruto had shown to begin reading his book. Upon looking at the book in her hands she realized she had made a mistake, this was the book she meant to give Naruto. If I have the book I meant to give Naruto then that means Naruto must have my Icha Icha tactics. No sooner had she finished this thought than she sensed Neko's chakra signature across the clearing where Naruto was. Uh oh. This won't be good, Yuga -Oh is going to accuse me of trying to corrupt him. She thought before she turned around and started to walk slowly across the clearing where Naruto was talking to Yuga. -Oh. With Naruto and Yugo -Oh as Kanako was discovering her mistake Naruto was reading the book not understanding much since what he was currently reading was meant for adults who actually understood what the scene was about. This is how Yugo -Oh found her favorite blonde, sitting against a tree reading. Hello Naruto-kun what are you reading? She asked still not recognizing the book yet since the cover was obscured by Naruto's knees. Oh hey Neko Nichan, just a book Inu Nichan got me for my birthday. Do you think you could explain what the characters are doing in this scene? What does it mean by when it says, Chi Chi moaned as Ichiro entered her? How do you enter, someone? Naruto asked curiously, by now Yugo had a sneaking suspicion what the book was, but still couldn't believe Kanako would give a seven year old smut. Naruto kun, do you think I could take a look at that book? She asked, trying to restrain her rising ire. Naruto handed her the book and she turned it over and looked at the passage he had been reading and couldn't help the blush that spread across her face as she read it, her suspicions confirmed she was about to go over and chew Kanako out when she sensed her coming over. Nako chan Naruto-kun, I think I gave you the wrong book, she yelled as she approached. I guess that does make sense, she does tend to get a little spacey when she is thinking about reading a new Icha Icha. Thought Yugo. Oh really? Can I have the one you meant to give me? asked Naruto. Kanako handed him the book and he took it, before he began reading he looked up at Kanako and Yugo, but could you still explain what that scene in the other book was about? he asked curiously. Yugo wordlessly handed Kanako the Icha Icha and Kanako had to restrain the urge to crack it open. Well Inu Chan, I suppose the damage is done, we'll have to give him the talk so he doesn't go to someone else and talk about it and inadvertently offend them, she said with a resigned sigh. I suppose I should handle this while we are awaiting Weasel, after all it is my fault. Offered Kanako. Thank you that's one talk I would rather not have to give, Yugo replied with a sigh of relief. Yugo wandered off as she heard Kanako start the conversation with Naruto. Now Naruto, what you read in that book is what people do when they really love each other. Kanako started in a tone which Yugo thought was much too excited for the task to come. Great she's probably trying to corrupt Naruto-kun and get him to read that book thought Yugo as she lowered her head certain that her little brother figure was going to be lost to the perverted side. Thirty minutes later after a half hour all of Naruto's questions had been answered and he was blushing furiously while Kanako had gone back to reading her new book, meanwhile Yugo was huddled in the corner with a rain cloud hanging over her head while she rocked back and forth muttering things like, I've lost him to the perverts and, stupid silver haired hussies corrupting my Otuto. This is the rather comical sight Itachi came across when he dropped down into the clearing. Uh what's going on here, and what happened to her? He asked while pointing at Yugo who was still huddled in the corner of the clearing muttering. Oh I accidentally gave Naruto-kun the wrong book for his birthday so I had to give him, the talk, and now she is despairing because she thinks I'm corrupting him, replied Kanako nonchalantly. I see, well me and Yugo have a mission for the Hokage, 
so unfortunately we won't be able to spend the day with you two today Naruto-kun, I think we'll just give you our presents from us and be on our way. He said, this seemed to snap Yugo out of her funk. Oh yeah that's right here you go Naruto-kun, happy birthday. She said tossing a package to Naruto. Inside were two objects, one was a book on basic chakra theory and introduction to the three basic academy jutsu, the second was a book on the basic academy taijutsu katas. Thanks for the books Nako Nichan, now I can get a head start before the academy in a couple months, Inu Nichan, do you think you could help me practice? He asked. No problem Naruto-kun I would be happy to, said Kanako. Yugo pouted behind her mask at him not asking her for help, but she understood, out of all of them Kanako got the most time off to spend with him. At this time Itachi came over and handed Naruto another package. Inside was a set of kanai and a set of shuriken, but the third item threw Naruto for a loop, although Yugo and Kanako understood even though they were curious why he would give one to a seven-year-old. Thanks for the kanai and shuriken weasel Nissan, but what's with the paper? Questioned Naruto. Well Naruto-kun, you remember how I taught you how to channel chakra? Asked Itachi. Upon getting a nod he continued, well this is what you call chakra paper, it is used to test elemental affinity, that way I will know what type of jutsu to teach you, I'll teach you a jutsu when you do something I think deserves a reward, think of it as an incentive to try extra hard in the academy, now go ahead and channel some chakra into the paper so we can see your affinity. Said Itachi. Naruto took the paper between his thumb and pointer finger. Okay here it goes, he said before channeling chakra. Now Itachi, you go and Kanako were Anbu so there was very little that could shock them but what happened next had their eyebrows practically in their hairlines, and their jaws dropped so far that their masks almost fell off. As soon as Naruto channeled the chakra the paper floated out of his hand and stayed suspended above his palm which was now open. Then the paper split a seemingly infinite amount of times until there remained only pieces smaller than a pinky nail, the pieces separated into four piles still floating above Naruto's palm. The first pile erupted into white hot flames, the second completely dissolved into drops of water that continued to float, the third pile crumpled into a tiny ball while sparks of lightning kept sparking around it, the final pile turned into dirt. All three Anbu, even Itachi who was usually annoyingly stoic had the same thoughts, fuck. Naruto could sense the looks of disbelief, and while he didn't know what exactly happened, he had a feeling that this wasn't normal. Uh, I don't suppose that's normal is it? He asked hesitantly. Itachi was the first to pull himself together enough to give an coherent reply. No Naruto-kun, no it's not, it would seem you have an affinity to all elements as well as an unknown element or type of manipulation. What's more the affinities are extremely strong, basically all of them reverted to their base elements, the wind the paper, which would normally only cut it in half or at most fourths, cut an uncountable number of times. Then it divided into four piles. Fire usually will burn but yours burned white hot. Lightning usually wrinkles, but all the pieces crumpled together into a little ball that even had electricity going around it. Water usually only gets damp, but yours turned completely to water. And earth will usually crumble, but yours turned completely to dirt, now you see what is unusual. And if that wasn't enough, it is rare to have even two affinities, not even mentioning three, but to have all affinities plus an unknown element. I have literally never heard of anything like it. Itachi finished his long explanation. So that means I'm really special. That's awesome, he finished with a shout while jumping in the air. While Naruto was jumping around shouting about how awesome he was, the three Anbu were talking amongst themselves about what this could mean. I meant what I said, I have never heard of this, what about you two? Questioned Itachi to the other Anbu. Me either, what about you Kana I mean Inu? Asked Yugo, catching herself before letting slip Kanako's name. It seems familiar for some reason, but I can't place it. But more to the point, do you think it's some type of new or dormant keke jenke? She said. I don't see how it could be anything else, I think me and Nako should report to Hokage-sama about this development immediately. Stated Itachi. I agree with Weasel, we'll see you two later. Replied Yugo. Alright, good luck. Said Kanako. Naruto-kun, me and Nako-chan are going to report for our mission now, have a good birthday. Itachi shouted before he and Yugo shunshined away. Kanako turned to Naruto and spoke, Well Naruto-kun, what do you say I treat you to that ramen now? She asked. All right, Ichiraku, here I come, he exclaimed gleefully before they headed off in the direction of the village. 
Hokage's office the professor Serutobi Hirazan was having a regular day, he got into his office and promptly started fighting his greatest foe to date, the bane of all cages, paperwork. By noon he was begging for something to come up to give him an excuse to stop doing paperwork, and it seemed Kami was merciful because at this time Yugo and Itachi sunshined into his office and promptly bowed. Itachi kun, Yugo chan, to what do I owe the pleasure? He asked in an jovial tone. Hokage sama, I think it would be best if this conversation were to remain private, so maybe you should dismiss the other Anbu and activate the privacy seals, it is a matter of great importance. Itachi replied formally. Taking note of his more than usually serious tone, the grandfatherly air about the Hokage dissipated and was replaced with a serious one. Very well. He said while signaling the Anbu to leave, he then pressed an button under the desk to raise the privacy barrier. All right, remove your masks and then tell me what this is about Itachi, Yugo. He asked seriously. They did as asked before replying, it's about Naruto kun. Yugo started to speak but was interrupted quickly by the Hokage. What about him? Has something happened? He questioned in a worried tone. Not at all, Hokage sama, it is simply something unusual we discovered about him. Itachi said hastily. Well, now I know nothing is wrong, you've piqued my interest, replied Serutobi. Well, you see, as you know, today is Naruto's birthday, and we gave him some gifts, ones to help in the academy. From me, he got a couple books, and from Itachi, he got a set of kanai, a set of shuriken, and a piece of chakra paper to test his affinity answered Yugo. Really testing his affinity, isn't he a little young? asked the Hokage curiously. Maybe, but I wanted to know so that while he is in the academy he will try his hardest, so as a type of incentive I told him I would teach him a jutsu every time he did something I thought deserved reward, and I am now even gladder I did it. He said with conviction, a hint of a smile on his face. And why is that Itachi? The Sandame asked even more curious now. Because when he channeled Chakra, First the paper floated above his palm, it promptly split innumerable times, then divided into four piles, one burst into white hot flames, another crumpled into a little ball with electricity sparking around it, another dissolved completely into water, and the final one turned to dirt. Itachi answered with an even bigger smile. The pipe dropped from the Hokage's mouth and his eyes went so wide they threatened to pop from his head, he like Kanako felt this description was familiar, but unlike her it gave him the feeling that he was forgetting something vital like a final piece of the puzzle, and every time he had it within reach, it slipped through his fingers, it was maddening. Unaware of the Hokage's mental battle, Itachi spoke again, effectively breaking Serutobi out of his musings. We thought that maybe this was due to either new, or dormant Keke Jenke. What is your opinion Hokage-sama? queried Itachi. I believe you may be right, but for some reason that particular ability seems familiar, as if I heard of it long ago, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it feels I am forgetting some vital piece of information. Replied the Hokage. Yes, Kanako said something similar, from that I deduce it might be a sign of endormant Keke Jenke that may be awakening. Itachi supplied. Yes, I would have to agree, Itachi. Said the old cage. Um, Hokage sama. What do you think we should do with this information, in regards to Naruto kun? Questioned Yugo. Hum, I believe it would be best to keep this a secret. We don't need people like Danzo, or worse Kumo, getting wind of this, Kami knows he'll do anything to get his hands on him if he hears about this. The Hokage said with a sigh. Hi Hokage-sama. Chorused the two Anbu. Hokage-sama, I would like to request I be allowed to train Naruto on his free time, I believe it would be wise to start helping him gain control of his elements right now, seeing as he has so many, with his reserves and the strength of his affinities, I have an idea for a training method that should allow him to have complete mastery of them before he leaves the academy. I also believe that if I start drilling chakra control in as early as possible, he may not have the problem most Jinchuriki have in that they cannot control their chakra very well," said Itachi. Hum. Normally I would not agree to the training of one so young in such advanced subjects, but I believe this may be a good idea in this case, not to mention that if memory serves correctly, you will have a lot less to deal with when it comes to Naruto soon enough, so yes Itachi you may begin training him next week," the Hokage replied. Thank you Hokage-sama, Itachi said gratefully, I was not finished yet. The Hokage said quickly. Before that, I want you to make sure he understand that this whole thing with his affinities is an S-rank secret, not to be told to anybody that does not already know unless I give permission for them to know, 
This may prove a good test to tell us how soon he can be trusted with the secret of his burden, should he prove able to keep this secret well. I believe we can tell him as soon as next year. The Hokage finished. Hi Hokage-sama, said Itachi. Now, as to the mission I assigned you to today, you and later Kanako shall be patrolling the village, we have ambassadors from Kumo coming and I want to remain on guard just in case, I wouldn't put it past them to try something. He gave the order in a grim tone. Hi Hokage-sama, I assume you will tell Kanako when she and Naruto come in to say hello today? Asked Yugo. Yes I think I will, I received a present from Jiraiya to give to him with my own. The Hokage said with a cheery smile. If that is all we shall take our leave Hokage-sama. Said Yugo. Serutobi lowered the privacy barrier before replying. Very well dismissed. Itachi found Naruto and Kanako on their way to the ramen stand. Naruto surprisingly understood very well the seriousness of keeping his ability a secret and took it very well. Ichiraku ramen a half hour after talking with Itachi, we find our favorite blonde going through the entrance flap of Ichiraku's ramen, flanked by Kanako. Hey Oji-san, it's me. Guess what today is? Naruto shouted. Naruto is that you? I guess today is your birthday isn't it? Came the answering shout from the kitchen. Before Naruto could answer a white blur ran out from behind the counter and grabbed Naruto into a hug. The figure turned out to be Ayame, the daughter of the ramen chef Tuchi. Happy birthday Naruto-kun, hold on a second, I got you something, I'll go get it. She said, and just as fast as she arrived she jetted off to get his present. About ten minutes later she came back out with a large toad plushie, it had to be about half as tall as Naruto, and at least twice as wide. I saw this and I don't know why but it just reminded me of you, I hope you like it. She said with a small blush. Naruto looked at the plushie for a second before yelling in delight and grabbing the plushie and hugging it tightly, with one arm, he used the other one to hug Ayame. Thanks Ayame Nichan, I love it. Naruto stated. Kanako and Tuchi, who had come from the back, smiled at the display. A couple customers glared in disgust at the display of the demon. Actually being happy and quickly left the stand till it was just the Ichirakus and Kanako and Naruto. All right Naruto, what'll y'all have today? Asked Tuchi jovially. I'll have ten bowls of miso ramen with pork, Naruto exclaimed happily. Kanako winced at the dent that would make in her wallet, but it was worth it if it was for Naruto. All right sure thing that will be right up, said Tuchi as Naruto and Kanako sat down at the table. Naruto sat the toad plushie down next to himself still hugging it tightly with one arm. Ayame seemed happy that he obviously loved her present so much. Soon Tuchi came back with his ramen. Naruto ate quickly and he and Kanako left for the Hokage Tower. Hokage Tower Naruto and Kanako entered the Hokage Tower, waving at the secretary who smiled back at them and told them they could go right up to the Hokage's office. Kanako was going to knock but Naruto decided on a different approach. He kicked the door open and ran in. Hey Gigi, how's it going? He asked excitedly. Serutobi smiled his grandfatherly smile at Naruto's antics. Hello Naruto-kun, I am doing good, what about you? I heard you've had an eventful birthday so far. He said. Naruto, who was still clutching the toad plushie, smiled brightly. Yep. First I got an all new book from Inu Nichan, then two other books from Neiko Nichan then a set of kanai and shuriken plus learning about having all elemental affinities, and then I got this plushie from Ayame Nichan, it's been awesome, Naruto said. Serutobi only just noticed that Naruto was hugging the plushie. Well I have some gifts of my own to give you Naruto-kun, the first matches that plushie, I figured you could use it to keep your money in, here you go, Serutobi said as he tossed Naruto a wallet shaped like a toad. Thanks Gigi, Naruto said happily. The second thing I have for you is slightly more sentimental, it was mine when I joined the academy, and now I want you to have it, this is my ninja tool pouch. Serutobi told him as he handed him the pouch. The leather of the pouch was slightly worn. Naruto's eyes started to tear up at the prospect of being given such a sentimental gift like his surrogate grandfather's weapons pouch. Th thank you Gigi, I'll take good care of it, said Naruto as he attached the ouch to his belt. I'm sure you will Naruto. Now enjoy the rest of your day, I'll see you tomorrow, the Hokage replied as he turned back to his paperwork, awaiting the arrival of the Kumo delegate. Streets of Konoha, clan districts, nighttime Naruto walked back home slowly, he had a great day, after he had seen the Hokage he had to part ways with Inu Nichan, 
but he managed to get her to take the toad plushie and keep it safe at her house so no villager could break into his place and ruin it. After that he had spent the rest of the day swimming and practicing throwing his kanai and shuriken. Now he was headed home, then he heard the soft sound of feet hitting the ground. Turning, he saw a figure running along the street carrying a bag that was wiggling. Realizing he was seeing someone being kidnapped, he decided to shout out. Hey you! What do y'all think you're doing? The figure cursed to himself. This was supposed to be a simple mission for Akabino Genji, go to Konoha under the guise of an ambassador, you said guys to get a chance to scout the Hyuga compound and then snatch the heiress and be out of the village before anybody even knew what happened. At least that's what should have happened, but it seemed Konoha was far more suspicious than the Sandame Rakage expected, so for the past 20 minutes since snatching the heiress, he spent his time dodging Anbu patrols and slowly making his way out of the village. Now to top everything else, this blonde brat just shouted out probably alerting Anbu. So he couldn't help but curse. I said what are you doing? Said Naruto as he reached into his pouch and pulled out a kanai. Genji set down the sack and walked towards the blonde. Kid. I'm only gonna say this once, forget ya saw me and walk away. He said. Unfortunately at this time the sack shifted so that the blonde could see the girl's face. Hey you're kidnapping her. Well I ain't gonna let you get away with it declared Naruto as he threw the kanai and reached into his pouch and got another to throw it too. He kept throwing kanai for about a minute but Genji would always dodge it lazily, finally having enough Genji went through some hand signs before shouting out his technique. Raiden. Denji Supia. Lightning release. Electromagnetic spear. A bolt of lightning shot forth towards Naruto, it would have struck home and killed him if a silver blur didn't streak out in front of him at the last second. A figure stood in front of Naruto just as the lightning reached them, it struck the figure right in the shoulder. Up until now Naruto couldn't see the figure because of the intense light blinding him, but once his vision returned to normal his eyes went wide in horror. I Inu Nichan. No Inu Nichan, he screamed in anguish as Kanako fell backwards towards him. With Kanako, ten minutes earlier Kanako and several other Anbu were rushing about the village trying to locate the kidnapper. It seemed the Hokage had been right to assign extra Anbu to patrol tonight, because not even two hours after the festivities had ended word came that the Hyuga heiress was missing and the Kumo ambassador was suspiciously not in his hotel room. So now all Anbu were searching for him. It was at this point she heard Naruto's voice shouting something unintelligible not so far away. Not even hesitating she ran towards the location. What she saw there made her heart stop, there was the Kumo ambassador and a suspiciously wriggling sack by the wall. But those weren't important, what was, was the fact the Kumo Nin had just completed hand signs and was sending a Raiden Jutsu at Naruto. She quickly moved to jump in front of it to protect Naruto. Sensei, Obito, Rin Chan, I failed to protect you, but I won't fail Naruto kun, even if it costs me my life. She thought fiercely just as the Jutsu hit her. Present time Naruto couldn't believe it, he had just been trying to do the right thing, and now, one of his first friends, his Inu Nichan was laying beside him dying. Inu Nichan, why? Why would you did you risk yourself to save me? He demanded while sobbing as tears began to fall. NN Naruto kun, good, I got here in time, I saved you. She said as she started breathing more laboredly, blood was starting to trickle from the edge of her mouth. But why? He asked still crying. My teammates, my sensei. I've lost so many people, I failed to save them but I swore when I met you that I wouldn't fail this time, that no matter what, I would protect you, so don't be sad for me, she said gently. Genji had remained silent throughout this but now made his presence known. Well, well, ain't this touching I think I might cry. Now if you don't mind kid, I think I'm gonna finish you off, and then I might take the chick with me, I might be able to get some fun out of her before she dies, he said, smirking evilly. Naruto felt angry, angrier than he ever felt before. An intense hatred for this man, a man that first nearly killed his Nichan, and now dared to threaten to rape her. His rage and anguish, sorrow and remorse continued to build. Suddenly he clutched his head and huddled on the ground while screaming in agony. He felt an intense burning in his eyes before. While this was going on, Genji was walking forward slowly with a kanai in hand. Suddenly Naruto stopped screaming and was knelt on the ground panting. When he got within five feet of Naruto, the blonde looked up and he immediately noticed something different. He disregarded it and decided to speak, in an attempt to intimidate the blonde. Any last words Gaki, he asked menacingly. 
Just two, Naruto said. Shinra. Tensai. Now an invisible barrier seemed to ripple outwards from Naruto, creating a crater around him and Kanako. The barrier slammed into Genji with the force of a freight train, and the Kumo Nin could fell some of his bones snapping, he definitely had broken ribs and possibly a broken leg. He rocketed backwards and slammed into a wall hard, slumping down the side when the force abated. Naruto was panting as he knelt beside Kanako he felt extremely tired but he pushed that aside in favor of seeing if Kanako was alright. Inu ne chan, are you okay? He asked in concern. Kanako looked up and gasped when she saw his eyes, they were now a metallic purple and they had no sclera, they had dot like pupils and there was one ring around the pupil. They also had two tomo in around the pupil as well in each eye. What happened to his eyes, is it a dojutsu? If it is it isn't one I've seen before, it's similar to the Sharingan, but different. What is it? She wondered. It's not Sharingan and nor is it Byakugan, then that only leaves. Her eyes widened when she came to a realization. I it's the Rinnegan. That explains the thing with his affinities, and the really dense chakra coming out of his hands, wait what? Naruto-kun. Are you doing that on purpose? She asked, indicating his hands. Naruto looked down at his hands and noticed the chakra. He immediately tried to halt the flow but it didn't work, so he was forced to watch as the chakra condensed and took form. It was condensing into two similar shaped objects, one in front of each hand, they were long, about three and a half feet each, and thin. Ten minutes later and lying in front of Naruto were two katana. Both were obviously of great quality. They had the same shape and there weren't any distinguishing characteristics, it was almost as if they weren't complete. In essence they were magnificent blades. The last thing to appear on them was two simple sheaths. The sheaths appeared to be made of blackthorn wood. The only strange thing was that he could see chakra running through them. Wait. Since when can I see chakra, he thought. At this point he realized a couple things, not only could he see chakra, but his vision was way sharper than usual. He was broken out of his musings when Kanako started coughing violently and the blood started seeping down her neck from below the mask. Inu ne chan, exclaimed Naruto. Hum seems that Jutsu nicked one of my lungs thought Kanako. Naruto was about to help her when his exhaustion started catching up with him and he started to pass out. The last thing he heard was a strange new female voice and Kanako replying. My, my, Kana chan, it seems like I'm always having to patch you up, you should really be more careful chided the female voice. WW what? How are you here? Am I dead? replied Kanako. Naruto's mindscape drip, drip, drip. Naruto's eyes slowly opened and he sat up and looked around himself. He was in a sewer. How in the hell did I get in a sewer? He wondered while looking around. There was ankle deep water on the floor, but he was somehow walking on top of it. There were three pipes. The one on top was red, the one in the middle was blue, and the last was white. For some reason he had an urge to follow the red one, so he did. Naruto wandered through the corridors until he happened upon a huge room. The far wall was actually a set of huge cage doors, and they were had a piece of paper with the kanji for, seal, on it covering the point where they joined. Suddenly a pair of huge blood red eyes opened and a deep voice boomed through the room. So, my warden has finally come to visit me, you know it took you long enough, it said. W who are you, and where are we? Naruto asked, we are inside your mind kit, and I, I am the almighty Kyubi no Kitsune, I was sealed in you by your Yandaimi Hokage. The voice of the now identified Kyubi replied. Now the visage of a gigantic fox with nine tails waving about behind it came into view. So that's why all the adults hate me, but the kids don't seem to know about it, said Naruto. It seems you're rather sharp kit, that's exactly why they hate you, replied the fox. Suddenly Naruto remembered the thing with the katana and his eyes. Hey, do you know what's going on with those katana and my eyes? He asked. I do indeed know what has happened with that, but it is not my job to explain it to you, replied the fox. What do you mean it's not your job to explain, if not yours then whose is it? Questioned Naruto. The reply came from behind him in the form of a female voice. That would be ours, Naruto-kun, it said. Outside Naruto's mindscape, BB but you're dead, I saw you die. Does this mean I'm dead too? Asked Kanako. No you're still alive, and as you can see, I'm definitely not dead, said the person. Kanako sat up and lunged at the person, wrapping them in a tight hug. I'm so sorry for what happened to you Rin, I don't even know what happened, 
One second we are being surrounded by enemy nin, then I blacked out and next thing I know I'm standing in front of you with my hand through your chest, she cried. It's okay. I have my suspicions as to what happened but it doesn't matter, I'm just glad to see you again so calm down, Rin said soothingly. Sniff, okay. But how are you alive, and why are you still the same age as when I last saw you? She asked. Kushi Ne brought me back. Now hold still so I can heal you. Rin commanded as her hands became encased in green medical chakra. All right, but just don't mess with my DNA this time, Kanako said teasingly. Rin huffed. Damn it, you're never gonna let that go, are you? Rin asked in exasperation. Well, you did change my genetic map, not something you easily forget, said Kanako, deciding to poke the bear even more. I was new to being a medic. It was a stressful situation and the first time I did a transplant, how was I supposed to know that the way I transplanted Obito's eye would integrate the Sharingan into your DNA? Rin said before continuing. Besides, if it had gone the way it was supposed to, you would have one Sharingan instead of two, and instead of working like an Uchiha's Sharingan, it would drain significantly more chakra, plus, because of their constant activated state, you have chakra reserves or at a size normally only a Jinchuriki would have, she finished. Kanako giggled before she responded. I was just joking, you're right, I am grateful. She said, then a thought occurred to her. Hey you said Kushi Ne Chan brought you back, but you didn't say how. Kanako said in a questioning tone. Well that's pretty simple really. Rin started. You see, when Kashina Ne Chan realized she was going to die, she made a plan to try and give Naruto a leg up in any way she could, so she used, Edo Tensai, to bring my soul back. Then she used a seal she came up with, based of a jutsu from Elder Chio of Suna, it took the Edo Tensai body and made it flesh and blood. Rin paused in contemplation. I guess you could say it was sort of a present to Naruto, to make up for not being able to be there for him as a child, she explained. By the time Rin was done speaking Kanako's wounds were basically all healed up. All right that should do it for now, and just in time too, if I'm not mistaken, there are a couple Anbu approaching. No sooner had the words left Rin's mouth than Itachi and Yugao arrived on the scene having sensed a surge of Naruto's chakra. Inu Chan, are you Al? Yugao broke off as she took in the scene. Hinata was still wriggling around in the burlap sack, with Genji lying unconscious ten feet away. Naruto was lying face down on the ground with a pair of katana near him, and he was lying near Kanako. Kanako had some dried blood on her Anbu uniform and a hole where the jutsu had struck, and kneeling next to her was. Nohara Rin san, is that you? She asked. Yes, it is me, and your little Yugo, if I'm not mistaken, and Itachi too, you've both grown up a bit, said Rin. B, but how? You're supposed to be dead. And you don't look any older than 12 inches, Yugo asked. Well, I'm alive, and if you want details on the how, you'll have to ask Hokage sama, as right now there are things to do, Rin replied. Itachi. If you could take the Kumo Nin to the T&I department that'd be nice, and Yugo, please return the Hyuga girl to her family, I'm sure they're worried. As for me, I'm going to take Kana-chan and Naru-kun to the Hokage, you can join us after you've completed your objectives," Rin said in an authoritative voice. Everyone hurriedly collected their respective charges and Shunshine to their separate location. Naruto's mindscape Naruto turned around as he heard the voice behind him. There were five people standing there three men, and two women. The first man had long, straight black hair that fell to his shoulders. He had regal features and a Konoha Hite 8. He also wore red traditional samurai-like armor with a black bodysuit underneath. The second man had a spiky mane of silver hair. He had red eyes and three red markings on his face, the first two under his eyes and the last on his chin. He had a hapori with the Konoha symbol on it instead of a Hite 8. He also had samurai-like armor but his was blue and had a white fur collar. The final man had waist-length black hair that spiked backwards, with shoulder-length bangs framing his face and obscuring his right eye. He had deep lines underneath his eyes, and a Konoha Hite ate wrapped around his forehead. He also wore the same armor as the others, his was red like the first mons. The first woman was tall, about five feet six, and she had an arm around the waist of the first man crimson red hair that was tied up in buns on either side of her head, there were two pieces of paper with seal formulas on them hanging from the buns, there was also a tiara of sorts on her held in place behind the buns. Her face was beautiful, slightly rounded with noble features and a diamond-shaped mark on her forehead, 
she wore an elegant deep blue kimono with gold wave-like patterns around the hem and the ends of the sleeves, it was tied closed by a simple blood-red obi. The kimono accentuated her hourglass figure. The second woman looked remarkably like the first. Except she let her crimson hair flow down her back to her waist, she had her arm around the waist of the third man. Her kimono was like the first woman except it was blood red and a black obi. She, like everybody else, was smiling warmly at him. WHWH who are you, how did you get in my mind? He asked them cautiously. The one to respond to his question was the woman in the red kimono, and by the sound of her voice, she was the one that had spoken before. We Naruto-kun, we are your family. She said simply. Naruto's eyes widened in shock. My F family? He asked. Yes, my name is Uzumaki Uchiha Akane. The man next to me is my husband, Uchiha Madara. Our daughter Uchiha Uzumaki Kashina was your mother. She said, shocking him even more. So you're my grandparents? Then who are they? He asked, pointing at the other three. The other woman is Uzumaki Senju Mito. The man next to her is her husband Senju Hashirama. They are my parents. The other man is Senju Tobarama, my uncle, replied Akane. Of course, you probably know Tu San and Tobi Oji better as the Shodem and Naidame Hokage, she finished. Naruto's eyes widened again after having returned to normal, and his eyebrows shot up. Not only am I meeting my grandparents, but my great grandparents and great granduncle the same time, and on top of that, I'm related to the Shodem and Naidame Hokages, he thought in astonishment. Naruto was broken out of his thoughts by the amused voice of Madara. So, you gonna give us a hug Naruto-kun, we have waited seven years to meet you, he said. Naruto went over and gave each of them a hug, last was Akane. Oh if only Kushi-chan could see you Naruto-kun, she would be so proud, awakening your Zanpakuto bloodline at such a young age, I don't think that's ever been done before, she said. Um, Ba-chan. I was wondering if you could explain what's happening with my eyes, and those katana, you said it was your job after all, he asked tentatively. Why yes Naruto-kun we can, I think we will let Madara-kun begin the story, for to explain them to you, we must tell you the story of your ancestry, she answered. Alright I'll begin, said Madara. Long ago there lived a man called the Rakuto Senen, and he had a powerful dojutsu called the Rinnegan, the full capabilities of this dojutsu are unknown. He paused here to take a breath. Before he died, the Rakuto Senen had three sons, and each gained a different one of his traits. The oldest son gained his eyes. This son was ancestor and forefather to both the Hyuga and Uchiha clans, both of which possessed two of the most powerful dojutsu, Byakugan and Sharingan. Madara stopped here, and Hashirama started to speak. The second brother was said to gain the sage's body, and was forefather to the Senju clan who are known for our strength in body and prowess in chakra control and nature manipulation, he said. The next to speak was Mito. The youngest brother, was said to gain his spirit, and was forefather to the Uzumaki clan, we are known for our skills in sealing, our fuenjutsu, and our zanpakuto bloodline, when awakened, our chakra will leak out and take the form of a zanpakuto, which possesses unique abilities, she finished. But, what does that have to do with me? Naruto asked in confusion. You Naruto, have the blood of all those clans flowing through your veins, the reason your eyesight has improved, and that you can see chakra, is because you have become the third person to obtain the Rinnegan, and as for the katana, those are your Zanpakuto, and you are the first person that I have ever heard of that manifested two Zanpakuto, dual wielding Zanpakuto have been unlocked occasionally, but you have two different Zanpakuto, which is fundamentally different, explained Akane. Rinnegan, so I have the same thing as the sage, but you said three people have obtained it, who's the third? Naruto asked curiously. To his surprise, it was Madara who answered. That would be me Naruto-kun, he said. You see I evolved my Sharingan to levels never before seen, and eventually it morphed into the Rinnegan, however, I only know a few of the capabilities of it, I died before I could fully explore it, he finished. Well, do you think you could tell me the ones you know of? asked Naruto. Certainly, the first is that you can sign multiple summoning contracts, the second is that you can manipulate gravity, which is why the chakra paper floated, you can also use yin chakra, yang chakra, and yin yang chakra. You will also have a strong affinity to all forms of nature manipulation, and be able to combine them to create sub-elements. The final benefit is an unusually strong body, and perfect chakra control. As for seeing chakra, 
That will stop if you stop sending chakra to your eyes, before you were doing it subconsciously, said Madara. Now, let me tell you about your father, Akane began. Outside Mindscape, Hokage Tower Rin, Kanako, and Serutobi sat in the Hokage's office chatting idly. The privacy barrier was up and they were waiting for Naruto to wake up, he was currently laying on the couch. Naruto's eyes started fluttering open as he stirred from his rest. The first thing he did was eliminate the chakra he was sending to his eyes. The only change in the Rinnegan was the tomo around his pupil vanished. I see you're awake Naruto-kun, how do you feel? Came the voice of Serutobi. Ugh, like someone used my head for a battering ram, was Naruto's reply. Serutobi chuckled good-naturedly. Well Naruto-kun, from what I've heard, that's understandable, unlocking not one but two keke Jenke at the same time tends to do that, he laughed. Naruto suddenly got serious. Gigi, I know, he said. Serutobi paused in his laughter, wondering what Naruto could mean. I know about the Kyubi, he said. Serutobi and Kanako froze at that, the only one not surprised was Rin. If Serutobi and Kanako were surprised before, his next words shocked them to the core. I also know about my parents, he continued. Rin didn't react again, but then she made her presence known to Naruto. You met them didn't you Naru-kun, she said. Naruto turned to her and examined her with a puzzled gaze. Rin had short, chin-length brown hair which framed her face, which was heart-shaped, and large, brown eyes. She also had two rectangular, purple markings on each of her cheeks. She wore a long-sleeved black top, a high-waist, light purple apron skirt under which she wore shorts. She also wore a blue Konoha Hite 8. She had on blue shinobi sandals, and stockings that stopped at her thighs. Who are you? He asked curiously. Oh excuse me, my name is Nohara Rin, but you can call me Rin-chan, or rin Nei chan if you want. Your mother arranged for me to take care of you, but I'll explain more later but you didn't answer me. You met them didn't you? She replied while repeating her question. I'm sorry Rin Chan but what do you mean, he met them, asked Serutobi, Rin seemed Tom ignore him. Suddenly, Kanako got an idea of what she was referring to, but waited for her suspicions to be confirmed. You met your grandparents in there. Rin stated in a tone that said she knew she was right. Naruto nodded. Serutobi was shocked as he had no idea who Naruto's grandparents were neither Kashina or Minato had ever given him any indication who their parents were. Kanako nodded to herself as her theory proved correct. Kushi Nei Chan transferred the seal to him before she died didn't she? She asked Rin. Yes, she did it during the time Minato Sensei left her with Naruto Kun to confront the masked man. Rin answered. Rin then turned to Naruto and repeated her question. Yes Rin Nei Chan, I did. He said. At this point Serutobi had enough of being out of the loop and decided to get answers. Rin Chan, Inu Chan. What is this seal you speak of, and how would it help Naruto meet his grandparents? He asked. Well, actually it wouldn't just let him see them, it would let him see his great grandparents as well. Because it was originally designed for Kashina Nei Chan so she could meet her parents, her grandparents on her mother's side, and her granduncle. It was originally placed on her mother to allow her to transfer it to her children so they could meet their grandparents and granduncle. The addition of her parents was made by her mother when she realized she wasn't going to live long when she gave birth to Kashina Nei Chan, explained Rin. What does the seal actually do though? The Hokage asked. This time Kanako answered. It seals a portion of the souls of his grandparents, great grandparents, and great granduncle into him so he can meet them and speak with them, she said. While he didn't understand it, Serutobi knew that it was well within the abilities of an Uzumaki. I see, so who are his grandparents, great grandparents, and granduncle that he got to meet? He asked. This time it was surprisingly Naruto that answered. Oh, that's easy, I got to meet Hashi Gigi, Mito Baon, Tobi Ojasan, Akane Baon, and Madara Gigi. They told me all about my heritage, and the Rinnegan, and even my Zanpakuto bloodline. By the way, Mito Baon. Hashi Gigi and Tobi Oji said to say hi Saru Chan, he exclaimed happily with a little snicker at the end. Rin and Kanako snickered as well, until they were silenced by a glare from the now lightly blushing Hokage. Saru Tobi looked at Rin and Kanako again before asking the question on his mind. By that does he mean? He trailed off leaving the implied question in the air. Yes, he means that his great-grandparents were Mito and Hashirama-sama, and his great-granduncle was Toborama-sama 
As for his grandparents, his grandmother was Uzumaki Uchiha Akane, and his grandfather was Uchiha Madara. Rin finished bluntly. Holy shit, how come I was never told of this? He asked. Well, the situation was similar to Naruto's, except Kashina asked Mito Sama if they could keep her parents' identity secret and pretend like she had come from Whirlpool. She didn't want to deal with people's bias because of who her father was, not that she was ashamed of him, she just didn't want to deal with people insulting him, said Kanako. You say she wasn't ashamed of Madara, while I can understand that. Why would Akane chan ever end up marrying Madara? He was one of her father's greatest enemies, and significantly older than her. Serutobi in puzzlement. Again, Naruto answered. Because Mada Gigi wasn't enemies with Hashi Gigi. Yasi when Mada Gigi refused to use force to take the Hokage title like the Uchiha elders wanted, they banished him and forced him to flee Konoha, then they told Hashi Gigi he fled because he wanted to gain the power to destroy Konoha. Well Hashi Gigi couldn't risk that so he went to confront him, by the time he arrived, Mada Gigi had already been fighting someone who wore a mask. The masked guy summoned Kayubi when he realized Hash Gigi was there. Naruto paused to take a breath here. Anyways, Hashi Gigi subdued Kayubi and Mito Baon sealed Kayubi into herself. Right after that the masked guy tried using a, I think Mada Gigi said space-time jutsu that Mada Gigi interrupted, it misfired and sent Mada Gigi into the future, course Hashi Gigi didn't know that. By the time they got back to the village, the Uchiha elders had already spread the false story and it was too late to stop it, so they pretended that Mada Gigi died. Then 20 years later he reappeared, met Akane Baon, and fell in love. Naruto finished. The room was silent for a bit while Serutobi took that in. Well, it's been a long day, and as long as you understand that for now you can't tell people who your parents are, not until you are strong enough to defeat at least Jonin, that being said, I shall respect your mother's wishes, you see the night you were born she had a messenger toad send me a scroll, in it she requested two things, would you like to know what they were, or would you like to find out tomorrow? He asked in a grandfatherly fashion. I think I'd like to know now, best get it out of the way, Naruto replied. Very well, the first was that when Rin had awakened, you were to live with her, I have for the past seven years been paying off slowly for a larger apartment for you two nearer to this tower, the money came from your parents' bank account. I have already taken the liberty of having your things moved there so when you two leave you can go to that apartment," explained Serutobi. Naruto nodded. Okay, sounds great, now what was the other thing? He asked. The other request was that I give you the storage scrolls that contain the entirety of your parents' library, from Fuinjutsu to clan techniques, the only thing missing is the scrolls for your father's signature jutsu, they are currently sealed in a storage seal guarded by a blood seal on my student Jiraiya that can only be unsealed with your blood and chakra, so nobody else can get to them," the Sandame said. Awesome, so when do I get the storage scrolls? asked Naruto. The Hokage gave a hearty chuckle. You've had them with you since you left my office earlier, I think you'll find that on the underside of the flap on the ninja tool patch I gave you, there is a storage seal protected by a blood seal, simply swipe some blood across it and add some chakra, he answered. Naruto's eyebrow twitched at the fact he had been carrying around so many awesome jutsu and didn't even know about it. And you were going to tell me about when? He asked in annoyed tone. As soon as you met Rin, she along with Itachi shall be overseeing your training during this month, and also on your free time after your days in the academy, replied the Hokage. Naruto tilted his head in confusion. Itachi, who's this Itachi? He asked in puzzlement. I'm deeply hurt that you don't know who I am Naruto-kun, we have known each other for a year now," came the amused voice of Itachi. Naruto whipped his head around. Behind him was Weasel Ni San. Weasel Ni San? He asked. You may remove your mask Itachi, whilst you are training Naruto-kun, there is no need for it," said the Hokage. Thank you, Hokage-sama," replied Itachi. Itachi reached a hand up and removed the weasel mask. Itachi had a handsome face with deep lines below his eyes, he had a black-clothed Konoha Hite ate on his forehead. He wore his black hair in a ponytail that went to his shoulders. So your real name is Itachi? Naruto asked, Hi, it is Naruto-kun, Uchiha Itachi, nice to meet you, Itachi replied. Wait Uchiha, so are we related? Naruto asked with curiosity. Itachi tuned to the Hokage with a raised eyebrow, the question evident in his eyes. It would seem, 
Naruto-kun is the grandson of Uchiha Madara, answered Serutobi. At hearing this Itachi did something that happened rarely, his eyes shot wide and his jaw dropped. Uchiha Madara, how? he asked. I'll explain later, for now I think it is best that Naruto-kun and Rin-chan get home, he said before turning to Naruto and Rin. I want you two to meet Itachi at training ground seven a week from now, he ordered. Hi Hokage-sama, Gigi, was the reply from the two. Rin turned to Naruto and offered him her hand, which he happily took, and they walked out of the room. Serutobi turned to Kanako, Itachi, and Yugo, who had just shunshined into the room. All right Yugo, report, how is little Hanada-chan? He asked. Hayuga Hanada is a little shaken up but otherwise okay, Hiyashi-sama is furious, along with Hazashi-san. They wish to know what is to be done with the Kumo Nin who posed as an ambassador, she answered. Serutobi turned to I Itachi, and the Kumo Nin, he asked. I took him to T and I, we got the confession out of him, Ibiki and Anko worked him over fast, and Inoichi confirmed it, he got his orders from the Sandame Rakage and the Kumo Council, pose as an ambassador, and use this to get close and observe the Hyuga security and then kidnap the Hyuga heiress. We have enough to demand recompense for violating the recently signed treaty, he said. Good, because I know just what to demand, replied the Hokage with an mischievous chuckle. Three days later, with Naruto and Rin, where are we going Rin Nei Chan? Asked Naruto, he was currently wearing sunglasses to cover his eyes. We are going to a shop I know of, they sell shinobi gear among other things, and the owner is an old friend of your parents, with his habit of knowing things he shouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if he figured out you were their son, she answered. Oh, okay, Naruto said. The two were walking down the street, people would start to glare at Naruto before their looks turned to confusion when they realized someone was holding hands with the demon brat. It was finally a cocky looking civilian boy who held himself in a way that said he thought he was devilishly handsome who finally decided to go over and speak to Rin, so he stepped into their path, forcing the two to stop. Hey there, what are doing wasting your time with that thing? You should go on a date with me instead, he said cockily. Thing. What thing? I don't see any things here, she asked in mock puzzlement. That thing you're holding hands with, you must be new in town if you don't know about the demon brat, he said, still in that smug voice, confident as soon as she heard this she would ditch the brat and go with him. The only demon I see here is a disgusting wretch like you who would try to call a child a thing, and I'll thank you to not insult Naruto kun around me. Rin said, now using an icy down that sent warning shivers down most of the civilian spines, unfortunately the boy didn't seem to have any self-preservation instincts. What did you say you bitch, he yelled as he lunged at her. Quicker than the civilians could see Rin activated a chakra scalpel and swiped it through the air, making the boy fall backwards holding his face, which now had a gash across it that started above his right eyebrow and went across his nose and part of his cheek. Let that be a reminder to you about how unwise it is to attack a ninja of Konoha, Rin said. As soon as Rin finished her sentence Kanako shunshined next to the boy and grabbed him by the collar. I'd say this one could use a trip to Ibiki and Anko, how about you Rin-chan, after all, attacking a Konoha shinobi is a serious offense, she said. I couldn't agree more, tell little Anko I said hi, Rin said cheerily. Will do, Kanako said as she shunshined away. All right Naruto-kun, let's get going, said Rin. The two continued walking, but now they were given a wide berth. Nobody else wanted to risk getting a chakra scalpel to the face, word quickly spread that the demon brat seemed to have a protector now, and she wasn't someone you wanted to piss off. Rakage's office, same time the Sandame Rakage was pacing his office anxiously. The reason was that he should have gotten word from Genji on whether his mission had been a success or not. The rakage was a large man with a beard that was the same color as his long mane of hair, a whitish blonde that was common in Kumo along with his skin tone. He wore traditional cage robes with the rakage hat on his head. Just as he was about to lose it, there was a knock on his door. He hurriedly got settled behind his desk, and called for whoever it was to come in. It was a Chunin messenger. Rakage sama there's word from Konoha, he said urgently. Good so Genji finally sent word on his mission said the rakage with a relieved sigh. No sir, you don't understand, it's from the Hokage, said the messenger. The rakage's breath caught in his throat. Was he caught? He wondered. Give me the scroll, he said. 
The Chunin handed the scroll over. The Rakage recognized the Hokage's seal and his heart rate increased. He apprehensively opened the scroll and began to read, his heart sinking further. To the Rakage of Kumo from the Hokage, Serutobi Hirazan. Two days ago we caught the ambassador of Kumo that you sent to deliver the recently signed peace treaty, making off with the Hyuga heiress. He was discovered by a boy on his way home, when he realized he had been discovered he attempted to take the boy out. Luckily one of my Anbu was able to intercept the attack before it hit the boy. When he was interrogated, he confessed to receiving his orders from you in your village council to pose as an ambassador and use this cover to kidnap the Hyuga heiress. So to summarize, a shinobi by your direct order not only attempted to kidnap the heiress to one of the prominent clans of my village, but he attempted to harm a boy of the village as well as injuring one of my Anbu. The offense is made worse in the fact that the person he tried to harm was the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, and to me personally is something of a surrogate grandson, as such per the treaty that was recently signed, which whilst a ruse to kidnap a Hyuga is till valid, I demand comparable recompense. If you do not deliver the healthy, and alive, Jinchuriki to the Nibi, to Konoha, I shall have to declare the treaty violated and declare war on Kumo. I should warn you that the daimyo of Kaminari no Kuni has been made aware of the situation and has supported our demands, apparently he does not appreciate you risking war with Hai no Kuni. Fail to comply and you shall be reminded why Konoha is the strongest of the five great nations. Signed, with permission of the Shinobi Council of Konoha. Serutobi Hirazan, Sandame Hokage. The Rakage was stunned, not only was the mission a failure, but now they had to give up the young Jinchuriki of the Nibi because he couldn't risk going against the daimyo's wishes. He licked his lips before speaking to the chunin. Send for my sons as well as Ni Yugito, Konoha has demanded we deliver her to them, and the daimyo has supported them, he said, shocking the chunin. But Rakage sama surely we can't give in to their demands, he exclaimed. I wish we didn't, had they killed Genji, instead of capturing him and extracting a confession, we could have demanded recompense instead of them, but as it is, we have no choice but to comply. Without our daimyo's backing, there is no way we could last long in a war," explained the Rakage. Very well, I will get a Sama and B Sama," replied the Chunin. Sigh. This will probably mark the end of my reign as Rakage," he said as the Chunin bowed and left. With Naruto and Rin, here we are Narukun, this is the shop," said Rin cheerily. They were in front of a simple two-storied, Japanese-themed building with a shed of to the left. The sign said, Urahara's weapon shop, a bell chimed as they went in the door. Naruto looked around in wonder, there were cool ninja tools and things all over the place. There was no one in sight, not even behind the register. Kazuki, it's Rin, I brought a new customer, shouted Rin. Kazuki, why does that name sound familiar, I know I've heard it somewhere. Naruto wondered, racking his brain for any clue as to why that sounded so familiar. Then he heard it. Clack 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 clack. My, 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 Rin Chan, you are full of surprises aren't you? Back from the dead and you brought a new customer to boot. Said the familiar lazy voice. No way, it's just a dream, he can't be real. Thought Naruto. Those thoughts were shot to hell when the man came into view. Weird hat, black howry with diamond pattern along the bottom, get a sandals. You, Naruto shouted, pointing an accusing finger at the man. Me. He shouted back, pointing a finger at himself and looking around comically. How are you here? Naruto asked. Well you see, when a man and a woman, he began. Gah. I know about the birds and the bees, said Naruto. Before Kazuki could respond Rin spoke. Naru-kun. What do you mean you know about the birds and the bees, who told you? She asked as an ominous aura seemed to be radiating from her. Uh. Well yesterday Inu Ne Chan gave me a book for my birthday, but she accidentally gave me the wrong book and so she had to explain what was going on in the book for me. He answered. It seems I'm going to have to talk to her about being responsible around children. Said Rin, while cracking her knuckles. Ahem. I believe you came here for a reason. What can I help you with? Kazuki asked, trying to get back on track. Oh yeah. We need two sets of practice kanai, two sets of practice shuriken and a few storage scrolls, and basic camping supplies, I want you to get those while me and Naru kun get him some shinobi clothing, said Rin. Very well, I'll go get the items you requested, answered Kazuki. Rin turned to Naruto after Kazuki had left. Alright Naruto-kun, 
Let's get you some shinobi clothing, she said. They proceeded down the aisles, looking at different styles of clothing. Naruto stopped in front of a bright orange jumpsuit with blue shoulders and a white fur color. At first Rin was worried he'd pick the jumpsuit out, she had nothing to worry about. What the hell is this doing in the shinobi clothing section? Yeah it's useful. For being a human target. Naruto scoffed. I couldn't agree more Naruto-kun, let's move on, said Rin. They continued to look through the aisles till they had picked out several sets of cloths, including one Naruto was wearing. All the shirts were short-sleeved black shinobi shirts with the uzumaki swirl and a high collar. Similar to a traditional Uchiha shirt, with mesh armor undershirt. The pants were cargo pants in shades of black and dark blue, with lots of pockets for scrolls and such, he had them tucked into the black shinobi sandals on his feet. He had a kanai pouch strapped to each thigh, and his ninja pouch hanging from a rusty orange belt. He wore fingerless black gloves with a metal plate on the back. He had a black trench coat on over his shirt, it extended to his knees. He still had in place the sunglasses that hid his eyes. His two swords were strapped to his back. Just as they finished picking out clothing, Kazuki came back with the items they needed. Well, 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 don't you look like a serious shinobi, that's been thrown in the washer and shrunk down to size, he joked. Naruto had been smiling at the first part, which disappeared to be replaced by an irritated expression when he heard the last part. Oi! What did you say you clog wearing reject? He shouted. You heard me. Kazuki said with a smirk. Anyways, Naruto-kun, let's pay for these things and get going, I've got to get you some decent food before we start your training, you need a well-balanced diet if you want to be a ninja, said Rin. Kazuki quickly rang up the items and they paid before exiting the store. Goodbye you two, come back soon, Kazuki hollered after them. So that's the one, huh? Look like his father with some of his grandfather on his mother's side thrown in, and to have unlocked his Zanpakuto at such a young age, two former captain's blades at that, he's just full of surprises, mused Kazuki as he watched them leave. With Naruto and Rin Naruto and Rin were now once again walking the streets, and were on their way to get groceries. Naruto seemed to be in thought about something, he had on a contemplative expression. Naru-kun sure looks cute with that expression, I wonder what he's thinking about. Wondered Rin while they were walking. Um, Rin-chan. Do you think we could go somewhere after we get the groceries? I want to check something out that my family told me about while I was in my mindscape, he asked hesitantly. Sure Naruto-kun, but I'm curious, what is it they told you about? She queried curiously. Well yeah see they told me about some scrolls they left for me, and a couple other things, he said with a light blush. Flashback, and that Naruto, is everything we know about your father, finished Akane. So my dad was the Yandaimi? Naruto asked in disbelief. Yes, I believe that's what Akane-chan just said Naruto-kun. Madara deadpan. Naruto grinned sheepishly and rubbed the back of his head. Yeah, but I just can't believe it, I'm related to three of the Hokages, I never thought that would be possible, said Naruto. Well Naruto-kun, if y'all wanna get technical, the Serutobi clan broke off from the Senju just a couple generations before mine, so you're actually related to all the Hokages. Hashirama informed him with a smile. Yes indeed, there's no doubt about it Naruto, being a great shinobi is in your blood, but don't forget, we all achieved that from working hard, training till we literally dropped, we shed blood, sweat, and tears to gain our greatness, your parents wanted you to grow up so you would be humble and appreciate what you have, stated Tobarama. I agree as well Naruto, my clan especially are very arrogant. It's rare for them to be decent people instead of arrogant pricks, they think of themselves as elite, and look down on everyone else because they believe the Sharingan makes them invincible, it is in fact both their greatest strength, but their greatest weakness. Through their arrogance, they forget that the Sharingan is merely another tool to be used, and they rely entirely on it, neglecting to sharpen their other skills. I will not be surprised if one of these days it is their downfall, said Madara. Don't worry Hashi Gigi. Tobi Oji, Mata Gigi, I won't forget who I am, and I won't let power go to my head. Naruto said seriously. Good, now I think it's time to discuss your training, and how we intend to help you, said Mito with a smile. As you know, you come from three powerful clans on our side alone, and another on your father's. She started, receiving a nod from Naruto. 
What this means is that we have a vast amount of clan scrolls in our possession, and before our respective deaths, Akane Chan, Madara Kun, and I, move these scrolls respective clans, the Senju, Uzumaki, and especially Uchiha, to a safe location where none may find it unless they are told where to look, and even then it is guarded with numerous blood seals and such, this is where you will find the scrolls to help you learn while you are striving to become a shinobi, explained Mito. At this Naruto started jumping around like the seven-year-old he was. He only stopped when Madara had enough and wanted to continue the conversation, so he grabbed Naruto by the collar and bopped him lightly on the head. Oi, pay attention ya midget, we aren't finished yet, he said before setting down Naruto. I'm not a midget, I'm a kid, Naruto yelled indignantly. Yaya yeah, yeah, whatever, as I was saying, Mito-chan hadn't finished, said Madara. Ahem, thank you Madara-kun, as I was saying, before we tell you where this is, we want to make sure you only tell those you can trust, like those three female Anbu who protect you, and Saru-chan, said Mito. Naruto looked confused now, three female Anbu, B.U. he only had two guarding him, he decided to voice this fact. What do you mean three female Anbu? I only have two female Anbu guards, the third is Weasel Knee and he is a guy, said Naruto in confusion. By now the adult males were snickering while the two females were giggling. Even the Kyubi was chuckling. It decided to speak up seeing as it was the one to figure it out for the others. Trust me Kit, Weasel San is a female, the female pheromones are unmistakable, not to mention that I can sense a very powerful genjutsu over him, said Kyubi. What Weasel Knee is a chick? Naruto yelled, the adults and the Kyubi winced at his outburst. Madara picked his ear with his pinky before replying. Yes I believe that was the general idea, I can only assume she did it because female heirs are often forced to be placed in arranged marriages instead of being allowed to be clan head, it is likely her parents didn't want this to happen so they passed her off as a male in hopes they could have another child who was male and would take that burden from her so she could have a happy marriage. Most Uchihas may be cold and power hungry, but they are still parents, explained Madara. Backslash. I'll just have to ask her when I get a chance, said Naruto, now calm again. Good now, the location of the hidden training ground along with the library of clan scrolls, is located behind a waterfall near one of the training grounds, just tell whoever you get to go with you it is the one Jiraiya frequents for his, research, said Mito. All right I'll remember that. Thanks for everything, will I get to talk to you again? He asked hopefully. Yes we shall talk again Naruto, but for now, I think it is best you go join the world of the living again, said Mito. With that Naruto faded from the seal. You think we should have mentioned the summoning contracts? Asked Tobarama. Nah, this way's more fun, replied Hashirama. Mito, Akane, and Madara rolled their eyes at the brothers' antics. I swear. You guys will never grow up, sighed Madara. Flashback end. Rin was stunned, a whole hidden library stuffed full of clan scrolls, and Itachi was a girl. Geez, what else could happen this week? First she wakes up from stasis after being revived, then Naruto gets the Rinnegan, stops a kidnapping, gains his Zanpakuto, and to top it all Itachi was a girl. She shook her head of these thoughts and resolved to get the shopping done quick so they could check out the hidden training ground. All right, let's hurry up and get this shopping done so we can get to that hidden training ground, said Rin. You got it Rin Chan. Naruto chirped happily. While they went about getting the groceries, Rin was pondering her situation. Basically for her, it seemed less than a week ago she went on the failed mission with Kanako and ended up with a Chidori through her chest. Of course she vaguely recalled brief flashes of the afterlife, but for the most part it was a blank. Now here she was a 12-year-old who has essentially skipped nine years in time. One thing she really regretted was that she had basically missed out on having a relationship. That and now she was back, the council would be hounding her to participate in some breeding program, it was a little known fact that even though she was an orphan, she had a powerful bloodline the council craved for the village to have. Sigh. Basically all my friends have grown. How am I supposed to find a normal relationship? Oh hey there, I just got resurrected so I'm actually older than you. Wanna go on a date, cause I'm desperate to get a bunch of dirty disgusting old geezers off my back about producing strong offspring? She thought pessimistically. Why did Kushine choose me again, surely she knew this would be a problem. Not that I mind, 
I really want to be able to be there for Nuru kun but right now I'm only five years older than Nuru kun in fact it wouldn't be too far fetched for me and Nuru kun to start dating. She paused and her eyes widened as it hit her. Why that sneaky little red haired vixen, she is totally trying to set me and Nuru kun up, she concluded. Then again, maybe I should be thanking her, after all, he is cute, he's nice, seems smart, especially for his age, and with the training he's gonna go through, he is sure to be a hunk. This could be the solution to the council problem. She mused in slight excitement, her thoughts now turning to the benefits of skipping nine years. I wonder what Naruto would think of this, he's smart, knows about the birds and the bees already, maybe I should see if he might be interested in the future, I mean, he is a shoe in for the CRA, Rin continued along these lines of thinking until her thoughts turned to more and more X-rated nature. I wonder if we could get Kanako to join us some time, then we could have a three, damn you Kushine. Rin broke off with a growl and a light blush. Many people didn't know it, but it wasn't Minato or Jiraiya who had gotten Kanako hooked on those perverted novels, no, Kashina was a closet perv and managed to inadvertently corrupt Kanako, and to a lesser extent, Rin. I bet she's sitting up there watching us waiting to see who Naruto picks as wives, she's probably rooting for me and Kanako for sure. This was the last thought on the matter she had time for. By now she and Naruto were already through shopping and had everything put away and were set to head out to the training ground. All right, let's go to that training ground. Rin said in high spirits, after all, it wasn't every day you got to see a library of scrolls that wouldn't be out of place in the cage's vault, and that's surely what these would be considering their former owners. Awesome. Let's go Rin Chan, I can't wait to start training, he shouted. Waterfall, near training grounds, all right Naru kun, hop on. It looks like I'm gonna have to water walk us across. Rin stated as she offered him a piggyback. Okay, let's do this. Naruto exclaimed happily as he hopped up and Rin started dashing across to the waterfall. Once they had successfully gotten through, they saw that behind the waterfall was an entrance to a cave that had torches lining the walls. Rin walked for about 10 minutes before she halted. The reason they did was a pair of what looked to be blackthorn doors with seals all over them. Well, Naruto kun. Looks like those are the blood seals, go ahead and give it a bit of blood. Rin urged. Naruto stepped forward and channeled Chakra to sharpen his fangs as Madara had told him to draw in some blood he swiped it across the seal and felt a small amount of Chakra drawn before the seal started glowing. The glowing left just as soon as it came and they were left standing there as the doors swung wide and revealed the area beyond. Both of them were gaping at the sight before them. Rin was the one to break the silence. Wow. Can't wait to see the look on Itachi's face when she sees this, but for now Naru kun, I want you to start training in the physical department, do 100 laps, then 100 push ups, sit ups, and crunches, and you can call it a day, she ordered. Okay, answered Naruto, he just knew she was gonna run him into the ground this week, but it was for training, so he didn't mind. Time skip, four days later, secret training ground. Wow. That was all Itachi could manage upon seeing the training ground. That's what we said, Rin and Naruto chorused. The training ground was similar to the one near the memorial stone, right down to the stream in the back and the training posts. Trees surrounded the edges for a good 20 yards in each direction, except for the side directly across from the entrance, which showed a short tunnel that ended in a smaller set of doors that led to the library. The ceiling had a combination of genjutsu and seals to make it look like the sky above it, it was here Itachi realized that the training ground was directly under the one with the memorial. Itachi's thoughts then turned to the library, and all the jutsus, the taijutsu and kenjutsu, iryojutsu, medical jutsu, he started to drool, wondering if Naruto would let him explore the library. Well, I think I'll leave you two to it, I have to get to the hospital, Hokage-sama has put me in charge of the facility seeing as behind Tsunade and Shizune, both of whom are not in Konoha. I am the most experienced med nin in Konoha, so train hard, see ya later Itachi. Naru kun, said Rin as she made to leave. All right, see ya later, Rin chan, said Naruto. Yes, I expect we shall still be here when you get done at the hospital later, said Itachi, letting a slight amount of excitement into his tone. He knew exactly how to start off the training, it was possible that they would spend a good portion of the day just reading Scroll's library. Once Rin was gone, Itachi turned to Naruto to see that instead of standing next to him, he was instead standing in front of the river in the training ground, looking at the water as it flowed. He made his way over to him and stopped five feet from him. 
Naruto was deep in thought on how to approach what he needed to say, ask Itachi. I need to do it, it will make things awkward if I don't address it, well here goes nothing. Naruto thought as he steeled his nerves to do what was needed to be done. He was thankful that he didn't have his family in his head anymore, he liked talking to them, that multiple voices in your head is a tad annoying. He now had it set up like Kashina did, with complex seals pre-arranged to allow them to project holograms of themselves inside the comfortable gathering area in the library, he could still talk to them telepathically if need be by channeling chakra into the seal his mother gave him. You seem deep in thought Naruto-kun, something you want to talk about? Itachi asked curiously. As a matter of fact there is. He started as he turned around, giving him a serious look while his eyes sparked with mischief in direct contrast to the look. That had him raising an eyebrow, his necks shocked him, and made his eyes widen to almost comical proportions. But first drop the genjutsu. He finished, now sporting a full-blown mischievous grin reserved for when he figured out a secret he wasn't supposed to. Itachi was doing a good imitation of a fish as his mind was racing. How does he know? Was the first followed closely by, does he suspect I'm a girl? And, what do I do, think girl think? Drawing a blank, he resigned to tell him everything. If you're wondering if I know you are a girl, that's a yes, he said as his grin widened. Itachi steeled herself and made the hand sign to cancel the real henge, which her mother had managed to get her sensei Tsunade to teach her. As the illusion dropped Naruto's breath hitched in his throat and the mischievous look morphed into an awestruck one. In front of him was a goddess. She was now about five feet four, a, in case you didn't know, I use feet and inches, her skin was pale, and her face was heart-shaped and resembled her mother's, and she had full red lips, her eyes were a beautiful onyx. Her raven-colored bluish-black hair had two bangs framing her face that ended at her chin, and flowed to the bottom of her shoulder blades, it was held back by a blue-clothed Hite 8. Her ambu uniform now hugged her body and showed that her bust was a mid-to-high C cup, with the ambu vest on, without it he imagined it would be definitely high C cup. She wore the same pants as Yugo and Kanako and they hugged her legs showing how long and graceful they were. Beautiful. Naruto whispered in a daze, this caused Itachi to get a huge blush that she struggled to control. Maybe I should start by reintroducing myself, my name is Uchiha Izumi, it's a pleasure to meet you Naruto-kun. She said, her voice now softer and feminine, it was pleasant to the ears. Now, how did you figure it out Naruto-kun? She asked curiously. Naruto struggled to use words after the revelation of how pretty she was, he was still slightly dazed. W well, you see. When I was in the seal and talking to my family, Mito Baon was telling me to be careful who I told of this place. She suggested I tell my three female Anbu protectors, I was confused until Kayubi told me that it could smell your pheromones, and then Mada Gigi said he sensed a genjutsu around you so I figured you were using it to cover your true appearance. They said it probably had something to do with avoiding arranged marriages, is that true? He finished with a questioning tone. Yes Naruto-kun, that is it. My father didn't care either way, but my mother was vehemently opposed to it seeing as she had to have an arranged marriage, so she made father go along with it," Izumi explained. Do you think there will ever be a time when you can reveal who you really are to everyone? He asked hesitantly. Hmm. That's a good question Naruto-kun, I have a feeling that isn't too far off from happening. Izumi replied cryptically. She knew from her spying for the Hokage that her father and the other Uchihas were frustrated with the loss of power of the Uchiha in recent years, were toying with the idea of a coup d'etat, some Uchiha who they knew wouldn't go along with anything like that were kept out of the loop, like her mother. She figured it wouldn't be too long till they actually started plotting and something would need to be done about them. Good, cause you're so pretty, it really isn't fair you have to hide it, he exclaimed, earning another blush from the female Uchiha. T thank you Naruto-kun. She replied. No problem, but there's just one more thing. I notice you seem a lot more warm and easy going right now. Why are you more stoic and cold all the time? He asked. Izumi giggled before answering. Oh that. This will be the last question I answer Naruto-kun. The reason for that is simple. It is easier to act male when I keep my emotions buried and appear cold. She answered. Oh, that makes sense. He said with a shrug. All right, to start things off. I'm going to teach you a jutsu that should help accelerate your training immensely. She started, now shifting to the tone of an instructor. A jutsu, and it will accelerate my training, awesome, let's get started, 
he yelled happily. Okay it is called, Cage Bunshin and not only does it create a solid clone, but it allows the user to retain anything it learns, so it can be used to gain knowledge, speed up jutsu learning, and commit katas to muscle memory quicker. With this, if you were to use 500 clones a day, you could learn several things at once, while also leaving you free to focus on physical aspects of training. She explained. Now, here is the hand seal. Once you have it down, I want you to create 600 clones to work on starting basic elemental manipulation, beginning fuinjutsu, chakra control, and finding and studying taijutsu and kenjutsu katas, she ordered as she showed him the hand seal for the cage bunshin. Some time later, all right, looks like you've got the jutsu down, Izumi stated as she watched the Naruto clones working on the first steps of elemental manipulation. Yep. Hey ya wanna go explore the library while my clones work on finding some taijutsu forms that interest me? Naruto asked. Sure Naruto-kun, you think I could look at some of the scrolls? She asked with a hopeful tone. Of course, you can look at anything ya want in there, same goes with Neko ne chan and Inu ne chan this way maybe you can use something in here to protect yourselves, I don't want anything to happen to you, he replied. Thank you Naruto-kun. Izumi said touched by his concern. No problem, now let's get to exploring, he exclaimed with a wide grin on his face. They spent a good amount of time exploring the rows upon rows of the library, until Naruto came across a set of doors near the comfortable sitting area. Curious, Naruto tried to push them open only to realize these had a blood seal on them. I wonder why there is a blood seal. Not even the doors to the library had one after the initial entrance, there must be something important here. He concluded. Hey Izumi-chan, come over here I found something interesting. He hollered over his shoulder. What is it? She asked as she made her way over to him, leaving a half dozen clones to read scrolls she found. A set of doors with a blood seal, I figure whatever is behind here is important. He said as she finally arrived, looking over his shoulder the female Uchiha decided to tease him. What gave you that idea Naru-kun, the fact it's protected by a seal, in a library, that only you or those close to you, should be able to enter? She asked with a teasing smirk on her face. Shush shut up, I was just pointing it out, he retorted, now sporting a blush. Anyways, now that you reminded me, don't let me forget to key you into the blood seals for this place, he said. Alright, let's see what's behind this door. He declared as he bit his thumb and swiped it across the seal. It glowed briefly before disappearing. He pushed the doors open and they walked into the room. They stopped in the center and looked around. All around in a circle were pedestals, and on them were scrolls, varying in size, some large, some small, he figured there must be about 15 or 20. The pedestals all had an animal name in kanji along with a picture of the animal. Wolf, fox, eagle, raccoon, cat, Naruto. These are summoning contracts, exclaimed Izumi in wonder. What's a summoning scroll? He asked curiously. A summoning contract is a scroll that the you sign, then you can summon the species that scroll belongs to, most of these minor summons, but there are a surprising number of battle summons in this vault, she explained, still looking around. Oh yeah. Mata Gigi mentioned something about being able to hold multiple summoning scrolls with the Rinnegan, he said. At this point Madara had been eavesdropping telepathically and he decided to speak to Naruto. Naruto-kun, I should clarify on what I said, when I told you that you could sign multiple contracts, I neglected to mention you can only sign six, so choose wisely, I would suggest you select three and wait to sign the fourth, fifth, and sixth, it will be some time before you can sign the toad contract your father held, course you don't have to sign that contract if you don't want, but you want to keep your options open. Madara advised. Oh. Mata Gigi says I can sign six contracts, I think I'll choose at least three now, and wait to sign any others, he declared. Okay, but I'm still in shock of seeing this many contracts, it's unheard of to have so many in one place, it must have been difficult to get all these, she pondered. Naruto saw her looking at a particular summon scroll with what could only be described as longing. Hey Izumi-chan, you wanna sign one of them, he asked. Really, could I? she replied with a hope-filled face. Of course you can, he answered with a wide grin. Yay! She cried as she suddenly hugged him, inadvertently pressing his face into her bust. She let go and skipped over to the scroll she had her eye on. The pedestal had kanji for raven on it and showed a raven in a tree. 
The scroll itself was black with red edging and had a pattern of three tomo repeating along the edge. This is a scroll that was lost to the Uchiha decades ago. Madara must have taken it with him when he left. I have a contract with the crows but they are more for deception and espionage, the ravens however were the Uchiha's battle summons. Izumi explained with a huge grin. While Izumi was cooing at the raven contract, Naruto was looking at the rest to see what types there were. There were, wolves, eagles, raccoons, snow leopards, white tigers, lava monkeys, ravens, bears, foxes, salamanders, chameleons, and falcons. Hum, what to choose? I want to have one that can maneuver on land, and another in the water, and probably one in the air as well, so which should I pick? Naruto wondered to himself. Naruto looked at all the scrolls and finally decided on three of them. Naruto took all the to the center of the room and laid them down. Hey Izumi-chan, can you come show me how to do this? He asked. Sure Naru-kun, I will demonstrate with the raven contract, Izumi replied. She walked over and sat down with the scroll before she spread it out on the ground. Okay Naru kun pay attention, first you draw some blood. She started, she bit he thumb and drew blood. Now you sign your name in kanji, next you make a handprint in blood, and that's how it's done, she explained as she finished signing the contract. All right let's do this, he exclaimed. Within minutes he had signed all three contracts. All right, now what? He asked. Now we summon a small summon to go inform their boss summon that we have signed the contract, Izumi replied. Here are the hand seals. Boar, dog, bird, monkey, ram. She said, she showed him each hand seals as she said its name. After she was done showing him she flashed through the seals quickly and slammed her palm into the ground. Kachiyose no jutsu, she cried. There was a puff of smoke and they waited to dissipate so they could see the animal inside. It cleared to reveal a raven about two feet tall, it had blood red eyes. Who has summoned me? The ravens have not had a summoner since Madara Sama died. The bird asked while it looked around itself. It was I who summoned you, my name is Uchiha Izumi, and I wish to become a summoner of the ravens. Izumi replied in a respectful tone. Hum, before I even consider, and before we allow an Uchiha to summon us once more, what would you do with the power to summon our clan? The raven asked. What I will do if I am allowed to summon your clan is to protect the ones I love, and strive to bring honor to the raven summons through my deeds and exploits, she replied. Very well, my name is Zozo, and I see you will be a fine summoner, I shall contact our boss summon to make it official, he declared. Thank you very much Zozo, I will make the ravens proud, Izumi said with conviction, a victorious smirk firmly in place. I shall take my leave. The summons replied. With that the summons poofed out of existence, back to the summons realm. Naruto then turned to Izumi and spoke. All right, I think we should go back to the training field for my contracts, one of them is aquatic. He reasoned. All right Naru-kun, we can also see how your clones are doing, she replied. Training ground, all right here I go. Naruto said as he began the hand signs. As he did the hand signs he realized he didn't know how much chakra to use to summon the three equivalents of Zozo for his contracts, suddenly his Rinnegan pulsed and activated, the two Tomo in each eye spinning, suddenly he knew how much chakra to use. Toripuru Kachiyose no Jutsu, triple summoning Jutsu, he cried. There were three puffs of smoke and they cleared to reveal three different summoning animals. Who has summoned me? Three voices chorused. I have. I wanted to speak with you about becoming a summoner of your clans. Naruto began. With Rin, several hours earlier, Konoha Hospital. After Rin had gotten out of the cave she had shunshined right in front of the hospital. She took a moment to straighten her clothes before she proceeded to walk in and go straight to the front desk. There was a kind looking nurse there who noticed Rin and decided to see if she needed something. Hello, is there anything I can do for you miss? She asked, leaving the question hanging in the air. Nohara Rin, and I would like to see the head of this hospital, Rin replied. Now why would you need to see the head of the hospital? The woman asked. Because I have an appointment with him, Rin answered. The nurse's eyes widened at that. The entire staff had heard of the imminent change in the head of the hospital, it was supposedly the third best medical specialist Konoha had. To find out it was a girl no older than twelve was disconcerting. The nurse immediately paged the head of the hospital. She arrived a few minutes later looking slightly irritated. Why did you page me? 
I am waiting for the new head doctor to arrive, she said. She paged you because I have arrived, Rin answered from behind her. The doctor turned to see a 12-year-old girl of all things standing there, what was the Hokage thinking? Her face turned to a sneer as she looked at her. You're telling me that the Hokage chose a little girl to run the hospital? She questioned in disbelief. Yes he did, this little girl, as you put it, happens to be the first med nin to ever perform a dojutsu transplant, and in the field no less, I am surprised you've forgotten me Akimi-san, she replied in a haughty tone. The doctor's face changed to a look of shock as she realized who it was. Rin, is that you? We were told you died? She asked. Akimi and Rin had trained as medic nins together, she was sad when she heard Rin had died. Now she saw her alive, and looking like she had just skipped forward eight years. Yes it is me, and you'll have to take the how up with Hokage-sama, for now I want to get acquainted with this place," Rin said. Of course right this way," Akimi said before leading Rin around the hospital. After about an hour they stopped in front of a room that was different from others. Unlike the others this one had a more comfortable setup, with an actual bed with railings attached. It also had several comfortable chairs. In one corner there was a chest full of plushy toys and stuff, and next to it a bookshelf with children's books. The walls were painted to look like the scenery of training ground with a lake in it. The window had the best view in the hospital as it showed the Hokage Tower and Monument. What's with this room for? Rin asked curiously, noticing Akimi flinch as if she didn't like to think about it. This room was set up special for our most favorite patient, however we don't like it when he has to visit, she replied cryptically. Why would it be personalized like this? And who is this patient? Rin questioned further. Well because he has to make more trips than any child should, and for reasons no child should. You see his name is Uzumaki Naruto, and the poor boy gets beaten every chance that the villagers get. She answered again, this time taking on a sorrowful tone. You seem to care for the boy. Rin replied, feigning ignorance as to knowing who Naruto was. Yes all the staff are fond of Naru-chan, he is the sweetest boy when you get know him, and we have had an unfortunate amount of time to do that don't get me wrong we love to see him, just not under the circumstances we normally do," Akimi said. Rin smiled at that, happy to know that at least the hospital staff didn't view Naruto as a demon. Well, I'm happy that there's some people in this village who don't view Naru-kun as a demon," Rin replied before walking out of the room. Training ground. Several hours later it had taken only 20 minutes to work out the deal with the summoning animals, after that Izumi had put Naruto back to work, by that time he had gotten an okay grasp on the basics of elemental manipulation, and should have them mastered by the end of the week, after that they would work on the second step to all the nature manipulation. But while his clones had been doing this and chakra control, Izumi had taken the real Naruto back to the library and looked for a book on resistance seals. After that she had quickly applied them to both his arms and both his legs, she also put one on his back and a main seal in the middle of his chest, the seals would remain invisible unless they were being activated or deactivated. She said overall there were 20 levels of resistance seals, and he was on level 1, she also advised that he remove the seals for an hour a day to get used to his new speed. Now they were sitting on the edge of the river relaxing, and Izumi thought it would be a good time to come up with a game plan for the training. Alright Naruto-kun, I think we should come up with a training schedule for the rest of the time we have remaining this month. Okay, what do you have in mind Izumi-sensei? He asked. Well I was thinking that in the mornings, you should create 500 clones, and divide them up similar to how we did today, then we shall work on your physical stamina, speed, and strength, as well as taijutsu, and elemental manipulation, then while we take a break at noon for lunch, your clones will disperse in groups of 10. After lunch you'll create 500 more clones, and continue where they left off, then we shall spend that time trying to discover the secrets of your Rinnegan. She paused and took a drink from a canteen she had brought with her. By the end of your second week we should be done with your elemental training to a satisfactory extent for now, then in the third week, we'll work solely on the Rinnegan, and I warn you, training in dojutsu is never easy if you want to advance your dojutsu, you must be in real danger so I can't go easy on you, so sorry Naruto-kun but it is for your own good. In the fourth week we will work on Kenjutsu, and the final week we will work on Genjutsu. She finished. What will we be doing after I start the academy, I'll have less time to train?" he asked. Yes at that time I'm probably going to start missions again, leaving me with less time than now, 
so I think we will focus on maintaining your skills while slowly progressing, we will also work on Fuinjutsu, she answered. Sounds good, he replied. Naruto sighed as he laid down to stare at the artificial sky. He couldn't believe how his life had turned around in the past year. First he started to make his first friends in his Anbu protectors, then he got to meet his family and find out about his parents. He unlocked two bloodlines and now, he had a real home with Rin. Everything is turning around just like Saru Gigi always said it would, he pondered. Now I am getting stronger, and I've been given all this power, and I'm gonna use it to become the greatest ever, and make everyone proud of me, he thought. Izumi watched Naruto lay back and watch the sky with a goofy content smile on his face. She couldn't help a warm smile from finding its way onto her face as well. She leaned back and lay there watching the sky as well. This is the scene Rin saw as she entered the cave. As soon as she spotted the two not paying attention, she grinned wicked deciding to have a little fun. She silently crept up behind them and took a deep breath. What do you two think you, redoing laying around? You should be training, she yelled. Naruto and Izumi leapt to their feet. They looked at the, angry, Rin. Rin noticed that Itachi was in her female form. Seems Naru kun got Itachi to open up to him, she thought. Before she let a smile creep onto her face. Well, Itachi chan, you sure are hot in your female form, she teased with a playful smirk. Izumi was blushing furiously and trying to stutter a response. She was failing miserably. Luckily for her, Naruto came to the rescue by making reintroductions. Hey, Rin chan, I want you to meet Izumi chan, that's her real name he said simply. So how was your day? He asked curiously. It was fine Naruto-kun. The hospital staff was great, they are slightly behind my standards but they should improve. But enough about that, why didn't you tell me you were so popular with the hospital staff, especially the female staff? She asked, trying to put as much emphasis on the word female as possible. Now it was Naruto's turn to blush. You make it sound weird when you say it like that, he shouted indignantly. Rin giggled as she saw the boy squirm, he was too easy to tease. Anyways, how was your day Naru kun She asked. Naruto got a gleam in his eyes as he remembered what had happened that. It was awesome. I learned shadow clones and then after that I trained using them, and using them in reading in the library, and then we found something you wouldn't believe, he exclaimed. Well don't keep me waiting what did you find? She asked curiously. A room with a bunch of summoning contracts, I was thinking you could sign one of them, he exclaimed. Of all the things Rin had been expecting, this wasn't it. A room only for summoning contracts. How many must there be? Okay Naru-kun why don't you show me this room and I'll pick one. She chirped cheerily as she grabbed onto him and dragged him into the library. Izumi followed close after, shaking her head at the antics of the two. When they got into the room holding the contracts, Rin couldn't help but gape at the sight. She had never even seen this many contracts separately in her life, but now she saw all of them in one place, it was amazing. So Rin Chan, you gonna pick one? Naruto asked. Shaken out of her daze, Rin squealed and gave Naruto a tight hug, inadvertently pressing his face into her breasts. Naruto was too shocked by this to even struggle in the beginning, however as it became difficult to get air he started to try and get free, to no avail he was finally saved by Izumi clearing her throat and speaking to Rin. Rin you might want to let him go before he suffocates, she said, barely restraining the mirth she felt. Rin blushed and let go of an equally blushing Naruto. She turned away and towards the scrolls to hide her blush. So um yeah, which one to choose? She said, trying to get the subject changed. Rin refocused her attention to the task of choosing a summoning contract. She looked at each one carefully. She wanted to pick the one that would suit her. Finally she saw the perfect one. After Rin had signed it she went through the hand signs and slammed her hand down onto the ground. The now familiar puff of smoke appeared before slowly dissipating. Sitting there before them was a snow leopard cub, roughly the same size as the raven had been. Yes, I got summoned finally, now which one of you summoned me? The leopard questioned in an excited feminine voice. I did, my name's Rin, I want to become your new summoner. Rin answered. The leopard stared into Rin's eyes intently. Suddenly it jumped at her and knocked her over, covering her face in licks. The leopard calmed down after about a minute and got off of Rin, her tail was still swaying excitedly. You will be a great summoner, and we will have lots of fun, just you wait Rin-chan, I'm gonna go tell mama we got a new summoner, 
My name's Kanari. Feel free to summon me any time Rin Chan. Be ye now. Kanari said excitedly before she disappeared in another poof of smoke, before anyone could reply. Well that was, interesting, was all Naruto could say. Everyone just nodded in consent to that thought. Then Izumi spoke up, breaking the silence. Well, I think you should get some rest Naru-kun, we got a lot of work to do over the next month, she said to Naruto. Time skip. One month later, Academy Schoolyard the front of Konoha's Shinobi Academy was swarming with children and their parents. The children were excited, today was the day they started the academy. Most of the clan heirs were there. The old Ino Shika Cho trio was standing there with their wives and their respective children in front of them, their fathers were reminiscing about their first day in the academy, it was very similar to this one. Off in another corner, the Inazuka clan head, Inazuka Sume stood with her daughter and her son next to her. Their Ninkan were also present, as well as a small puppy snuggled into the hood of her son Kiba's hood. Not too far away, Hayuga Hiyashi stood stoically behind his daughter who was doing a fantastic imitation of a turtle bee trying to disappear into her coat. Next to them stood his wife Hitomi, holding their second daughter, little two-year-old Hanabi. He couldn't help but sigh at his daughter's skittish behavior, not that he blamed her after the elder council kept, encouraging, her, which was code for tearing her down whenever they saw her without him or his wife around, and he couldn't do anything because of a century's worth of clan laws reducing how much power he had in the clan. Over by the trees stood the Abarame clan head Shibi, along with his wife and their son Shino, they were stoic and not speaking to anyone. Lastly was the Uchiha clan head and his family, his wife, Makoto, his son, Itachi, his other son, Sasuke, and their only daughter, Sasuke's twin sister Sayuri. The truth was they hadn't been a family for a long while, since before Sasuke and Sayuri were born, the tension came after Fugaku had tried, keyword tried, to make, Itachi, into the perfect Uchiha soldier, but that fell through because she had inherited her mother's kind nature, now Makoto was extra careful to make sure he didn't get his claws into Sasuke or Sayuri, of course Sasuke looked up to him so much, he didn't need to, he took after him all on his own. Near the front entrance was a certain pink-haired howler monkey, along with her daughter, who was a howler monkey in training and had her hair. Suddenly there was a bunch of angry whispering and such as one Uzumaki Naruto came strolling in, holding the hand of Rin. Rin kissed him on the forehead which made him blush. She then had to leave for the hospital after wishing him good luck. Naruto had grown a couple inches over the month and his body was now very well nourished and he was showing the results of his training. His hair had grown longer over the month and it was now made apparent that his hair was similar to his grandfather's when he was younger. The only difference was he was blonde. His face had become slightly more narrow as he trained over the month. His clothes remained the same over the month, the only difference being his two Zanpakuto were seal in the form of the Uzumaki swirl on the back of his high-collared shirt. Naruto smirked at the woman who he believed to be a human, howler-monkey hybrid. He then remembered how the civilian council found out about his training with Izumi. Flashback Naruto and Itachi were strolling down through the streets to a training ground to just hang out. It was the end of the second week of training, and Naruto had progressed at ridiculous levels. When they got to the training ground Izumi was about to drop her henge, when three Anbu shunshined into the clearing. They had a boar, hair, and bat masks. The boar masked Anbu cleared his throat before he spoke. The civilian and elder councils demand your presence in a council meeting immediately, we were given orders to come get you. He said. Izumi narrowed her eyes as she knew if the Hokage had wanted to inform them then he would have sent Kanako or Yugo to tell them. And exactly who gave these orders? She questioned in a calculating voice. The civilian and elder councils of course. He replied in confusion, which turned to slight fear when he noticed the Uchiha's expression become one of incredulity and then anger. And you followed it why? He questioned, tone saying that the reason better be good. Because our duty is to follow orders given by, he was cut off when she suddenly interrupted. By the Hokage and only the Hokage, we are Anbu and we are directly under the Hokage's control, the civilians and elders have no say in our orders and any order given is to be disregarded unless verified with the Hokage, and they don't have the authority to order around regular shinobi, let alone Anbu. The only council that may give any orders to a shinobi is the shinobi council, and even then they cannot order Anbu. She lectured heatedly, by now the Anbu were getting very worried, especially with her next words. By carrying out these orders you have usurped the authority of the Hokage and should feel lucky you are rookies, 
I will take Naruto kun and go to the council meeting. Meanwhile, you will go to the Hokage and make sure he is informed of this meeting. I will send shadow clones to the clan heads to inform them. I suspect the council forgot to mention this meeting. She snapped. The Anbu immediately saluted before Shun shining to inform the Hokage. Council Chambers 30 minutes later the civilian council was getting agitated at having to wait so long for the demon brat to show up. The resident howler monkey was about to start screeching when the doors burst open and in walked to their surprise, a very irritated shinobi council, including the janin, and a furious Hokage. The civilians were now worried, this wasn't supposed to happen, the elders were more irritated than worried. Behind the council and cage walked, Itachi, and Rin who had Naruto between them. As soon as the Hokage sat down the howler monkey decided to open her mouth. What is the meaning of this Hokage act? She cut off choking as the Hokage blasted her with enough ki to make Janin sweat, which was overkill for a civilian. That is to be my question to you councilwoman Haruno, I was informed of this meeting going on without the knowledge of the shinobi council or I, so explain yourselves, he ordered with no small amount of menace. Well Hiruzen we heard that this boy was being trained by Itachi, so we ordered some anbu, Homura began before being cut off. That is Hokage-sama to you, and I must have misheard, did you say you gave orders to an anbu? He asked. Yes now, Homura tried to speak but was cut off again. You realize that is treason as you have no authority to give orders to any of my shinobi right? Hiruzen asked with an edge to his tone. Nn no, w we were not aware Hokage-sama. Homura replied. Well I shall overlook it for this time, but rest assured I will make sure all my shinobi know that anyone not of the shinobi council, or a shinobi is to be arrested for trying to usurp my authority. He ordered in a clipped tone. The civilians and elders muttered reluctant, hi Hokage Samas. Good now as to the reason you wanted the meeting. Yes young Naruto kun is receiving training from Itachi kun, now why is this relevant? He asked. W well Hokage sama it worries some of us because of the boy's condition, that he is receiving training from an anbu. Homura answered carefully. It is blatant favoritism. Guess who? First off there is nothing to worry about, and as for you councilwoman, watch your tone, it is not favoritism, I did not order Itachi to do this, he requested to be allowed to teach Naruto kun. Hiruzen replied cheerfully, enjoying their indignant expressions. What? Why would you want to train that demon? Why not your brother? asked a fat councilman. Itachi replied in his normal monotone. Watch what you call Naruto kun, and there are several reasons. 1. He shows more promise than even myself did. 2. Sasuke has a whole clan to train him, Naruto has no clan to train him, he shows so much promise it would be a crime not to cultivate it. 3. If I were to train a sibling it would be my sister, and I would still train Naruto kun as well. 4. I feel like it. He replied. The last one caused a sweat drop to everyone listening, even the civilians. Fugaku could only shake his head at his son's attitude and narrow his eyes when he said, he said, he would prefer teaching Naruto or his sister. He didn't like that one bit as he saw a spark to surpass Itachi in Sasuke and thought he could be an excellent asset to the clan. How could you prefer this demon brat to your brother? asked the fat man. It was surprisingly Naruto who spoke next with a question to the Hokage. Hey Gigi. I thought you said there was a law against calling me that. Naruto asked curiously. The shinobi council snickered at his knowledge about the law, while the civilians sweated. I do believe you are correct Naruto-kun, Anbu. Take him to Ibiki before he is sentenced. The Hokage ordered jovially. On Q2 Anbu appeared and then shunshined away to carry out their orders. Okay. Now that is over, is there anything else, Serutobi questioned. Yes Hokage-sama I do. Why? Because I am curious what Itachi-san meant when he said that Naruto has more potential than anyone else, it seems a curious thing to say. Asked the Abarame clan head Shibi. Very well but I believe the civilian and elder councils should leave, they aren't needed here for this and quite frankly we are traveling swiftly into shinobi related business. Th Hokage replied. Although there were some objections there wasn't anything they could do so the two councils were ushered out. At that point in time an Anbu appeared and whispered something into the Hokage's ear. At least that is what the Hokage wanted people to think. Really he had signaled the Anbu because he needed an excuse for his next action. I am very sorry Fugaku-san but it would appear the head of Anbu wants to coordinate with you on the security when the guest from Kumo arrives next week, 
He says it is very urgent, so if you could please attend to this I would be very grateful, the Hokage said. Fugaku narrowed his eyes but ultimately nodded his assent since it seemed reasonable. As soon as he left the Hokage had his Anbu erect security and privacy seal all over the council room. Good now we can begin the explanation. The Hokage stated seriously. The ever-observant Shikaku, head of the Nara clan, decided to speak up. Asterisk sigh there is no security details to go over as there, you just wanted to get rid of Fugaku, troublesome, he stated with his usual bored voice. I don't get it sensei, I thought you said the Nara were smart. It seems like he just stated the obvious to me, I mean the whole, head of Anbu needs to talk, then putting up privacy barriers made that kinda easy to read. Naruto put his two cents in, the other clan head chuckled at this, except for his friends Inoichi and Choza, who openly laughed along with the Inazuka clan head soon. All Shikaku did was sigh and mutter, troublesome. Anyways you asked Itachi why he thought Naruto had more potential than anyone else, it's simple. The Sandame stated. What do you mean Hokage-sama? Inoichi questioned. It's simple because Naruto-kun has massive chakra reserves, and he also has ridiculously good chakra control. Itachi stated simply. Now that got their attention, Jinchuriki were notorious for bad chakra control. So how did Naruto have near-perfect control? Then it hit Hiyashi like a ton of bricks as the name of only two clans came to mind, Senju, or Hyuga. It was Hiyashi who managed to articulate the thoughts. He is either Hyuga or Senju isn't. He asked, said to the Hokage. Hiruzen's eyes widened at this. How did you know? He asked Hiyashi in wonder. The Hokage then gave a look at Naruto as if asking him how to approach this. It was his life after all. You got me. I'm Senju on my Ka-chan's side. Naruto said happily. You know who your mother was? Sum asked in shock. Of course, there was only one Uzumaki in the village seven years ago. He replied simply, this seemed to appease them, until they realized something, how did he know she was part Senju? They brushed it off, assuming he talked to the Hokage and found this out. Okay but if you don't mind me asking, do you know your specific family line? Asked Shibi curiously. The Hokage knew he would have to give them something so he decided to just tell the Senju side. He is the great-grandson of my sensei Senju Hashirama the Shodai Hokage. He answered, making them go wide-eyed, here was a direct descendant of the first Hokage. After that everyone was dismissed and went their separate ways. Flashback end. Naruto looked around and decided he would go see Izumi. So he made his way over to her and her family. He thought her little sister looked a lot like a younger version of her, and her mother was the same except an older version, but not too much older. Hey sensei, are you here to see your brother and sister off? He called to Izumi when he was five feet from her. His eyes were back to their original blue and they were sparkling. Izumi looked up and smiled when she saw Naruto. She had seen him only yesterday and was very proud of his progress, she could honestly say he was the strongest of the incoming students, and probably the whole academy as well. Hello Naruto-kun, still tired from our last day of training? Itachi asked. Her two little siblings were curious as to who this was. He he he, no way sensei. I am all ready to go, I'm gonna kick ass in the academy, tt ibeo, he proclaimed. Well I can't very well argue that point now can I Naruto-kun? Itachi asked rhetorically. Sasuke had enough and decided to demand the answers he wanted. Sayuri was a little more patient than her brother. Itachi ni, who's this loser, and why are you talking to him, and why is he calling you, sensei, Sasuke demanded in a bratty voice. Nay, sensei is this your brother? asked Naruto. Hi Naruto-kun, the girl next to him is his twin and my Imoudo, Sayuri. Itachi, replied. Now most people would tread carefully around a clan heir, but not Naruto, he called M as he saw M. Well he seems kinda bratty, and has a superiority complex, and from what I can sense, nothing to warrant said complex. But your sister seems more humble and polite, and from what I sense of her, she has far more potential. Said Naruto. Sasuke seethed at his jab, whilst Sayuri blushed at the praise. Fugaku narrowed his eyes at the brat while Makoto couldn't help but agree. Who do you think you are, insulting my son, and why do you say his sister has more potential, men are stronger than women. Fugaku responded scathingly, making his wife and, Itachi, look angry, 
Sasuke smug cause he thought the boy was gonna get it, and Sayuri sad. First. I wasn't insulting so much as stating facts based upon observation. Two. Men aren't stronger than women that's a myth made by impotent men who wanted to make themselves seem more important. And three. It is simple, she has at least a third more chakra than him and hers is more focused, meaning better control. Naruto fired back. Fugaku was seething as he had just got beaten in a verbal spar with an eight-year-old, and that said boy was right now that he actually stopped to check his children's chakra signature. Makoto was glad that Naruto had put her husband in his place, and thought her son could use a little more humility. Sasuke was livid because this nobody, if only he knew, had put him down. Sayuri was happy and blushing from Naruto defending her, and glad someone thought she was better than her brother besides her Aniki and her Ka-san. W-H-O the hell are you? Sasuke shouted in anger. That is simple Sasuke-chan, he is my student. Itachi replied. This had Sasuke gaping, Sayuri and Makoto already knew because he told them he had a student named Naruto already. Why are you teaching him and not me? Sasuke demanded. Again, simple, he is humble and kind, and while I love you, you Oto Uto, are too arrogant and mean for me to teach you anything. Itachi, replied. Sasuke couldn't respond to that so he just shut up. Fugaku was not happy because he felt Sasuke took after him so, Itachi, was really insulting him as well. Well I'll see you later sensei, hope to see you in class Sayuri-chan, he exclaimed leaving a blushing Sayuri. Academy Classroom, later, the new teacher Yumino Aruka was taking roll call in his first ever class, and there was all of the clan heirs in his class. No pressure right, yep absolutely no pressure at all. Uchiha Sasuke. HNN, Uchiha Sayuri. Here, Uzumaki Naruto. I'm gonna rock this class, he shouted Aruka looked up at this reply. So he's in my class, well he doesn't seem very demon-like to me. He thought to himself. His assistant Mizuki was thinking completely different thoughts. There's the demon, I'm gonna make sure he fails. Alright class this is our first day so I think we will start with a test to test basic knowledge, then we will move to the target range to see how good you are with shuriken and kanai, finally we will have one-on-one -on -one spars, this will establish the initial class rankings, Aruka told them. There was some grumbling but ultimately they complied as the two teachers passed out the tests. Mizuki made sure to be the one to give Naruto his test. He had put a genjutsu on it to make it harder. He gave a malicious mental grin before he moved on. Naruto frowned as he received his test. He was frowning because the genjutsu was so obvious. He caught Mizuki's eyes and gave a mischievous grin before raising his hand and calling for Aruka. That made Mizuki's eyes go wide in panic. There is no way he could have sensed it, he thought. Yes Naruto what is it? Aruka asked kindly. Aruka sensei there's something weird with my test, it's kind of shimmery. Naruto answered innocently. Aruka narrowed his eyes and frowned as he recognized that it was a genjutsu. He then turned his gaze to Mizuki. Mizuki wouldn't meet his eye but he saw his fists clenched in anger. That answered all of Aruka's questions. Yes I hear is a new one, I'll just take that one. Aruka said as he swapped the tests. Naruto just nodded happily and waited for the test to begin. As soon as it did he flipped the test over and began. Okay first question, are you kidding me? How many hokages have there been? That's gotta be a fluke they can't all be that easy. He thought. But as it turned out they were. The hardest was the one that asked the special skills, abilities of the Shodai, Nidame, Sandame, and Yandaimi hokages, course he was directly related to three of them and the last was like a grandfather to him so that one wasn't too hard. Five minutes into the test he got up and went and handed it to Aruka who while shocked, began grading immediately. He was followed closely by a pineapple-haired boy who he realized was sitting next to him. He decided to strike up a quiet conversation. Hey I'm Uzumaki Naruto, what's your name? He asked politely. The boy sighed before answering. My name's Narashikamaru. He replied lazily. That test was a waste of time wasn't it? He asked with a little amusement. You got that right, it was just troublesome. Shikamaru replied. If ya don't mind, I'm gonna catch a nap. Shikamaru replied before yawning and laying his head on his arms. Naruto sweat dropped before turning to look at the rest of the room. His gaze fell upon Sayuri as she focused on her test. She looked very beautiful just like her sister. She was wearing a high collared shirt similar to the one he wore but hers had an Uchiha crest on the back, he knew what that meant, 
She had passed the coming of age test, he snickered when he noticed Sasuke didn't have one. The time passed slowly as he continued to stare at her. Similar to how Rin, Kanako, and Izumi had done, Sayuri stunned him with her beauty. He definitely wanted to be friends with her. Sayuri for her part had felt Naruto watching her and she could honestly say she was flattered. She was intrigued by this boy, he was trained by her Nichan, so he must be really strong. On top of this, Izumi said he was humble and kind, both of which were rare traits in the Uchiha clan. Having finally finished the test after 15 minutes, she went and gave it to Haruka before turning around and going back up the stairs. She noticed an open seat next to Naruto in the back, so she took advantage of this opportunity to talk to him. Sayuri walked up the steps quickly and sat down next to him. She averted her eyes as he looked at her and a blush colored her cheeks. She steeled herself before turning to look at him and smiling shyly and speaking. Hi. We didn't really get a chance to introduce ourselves earlier, my name's Uchiha Sayuri. I wanted to thank you for sticking up for me, she started. Well it's nice to meet you, my name's Uzumaki Naruto, and think nothing of it Sayuri-chan, I hate seeing beautiful girls get bullied, he replied with a grin. Sayuri couldn't help but blush at the affectionate suffix, she couldn't help but let her thoughts run wild, he thinks I'm beautiful? I wonder if he... Her thoughts trailed as she realized he was speaking again. Hey did you hear me? Naruto asked as he realized she was zoned out. Huh. What did you say Naruto-san? She asked in embarrassment. Well I was wondering if maybe some time you would like to train some time with me and Itachi-sensei? He answered, asked. A are you sure he wouldn't mind? He usually doesn't have time to train me or Sasuke. She replied, looking a little downcast at this. Naruto just chuckled as he knew he real reason he never trained them, stupid Sasuke. Oh that, don't worry Sayuri-chan, he just says that cause he doesn't want to train Sasuke, he'll have no problem training you, he stated, waving a hand in dismissal of the thought of Itachi, not wanting to teach her. Sayuri was relieved that this was the reason he didn't train her, she had begun to think he didn't like her, but she could understand not wanting to train Sasuke, whenever he asked for it, it was more of a demand. Oh okay that sounds great, when do we start? She asked with a smile now showing. How about after school? You can come with me to our training ground, he answered back with a wide smile. Sounds good, I can't wait, she said with a smile now appearing on her face. At this point the time they had been given had just expired and Aruka stood up to get everybody's attention. Okay class, all the tests have been handed in and graded, I'll reveal the results at the end of the taijutsu spars he told them. Now we will be going out to the target range to test everyone's shuriken and kanai skills, he said, and then walked out of class with everyone following him. Outside, okay everyone, here's how it's gonna go, I'll call your name, then you'll step up, you will have five kanai and five shuriken to throw, for each accurate throw you get a point. Now first up is Aburame Shino, he said. The Aburame stepped up and threw the shuriken and kanai one at a time. He got a six tenths. The process continued and almost all of the clan heirs had done relatively well. Shikamaru, Choji and Kiba got a five tenths, Hanada surprisingly got a six tenths. Ino was the only one who scored badly with only a three tenths. Most of the civilians including the pink haired banshee only scored a one tenth. Uchiha Sasuke it's your turn. Sasuke swaggered forward smugly, confident he would be the best. At this point it became apparent to the boys that Sasuke already had fangirls in class as they started screeching loudly and cheering him on, the pink-haired howler monkey was the loudest of all. Naruto had a look of disgust on his face as he saw them. He was currently standing next to Sayuri who also couldn't keep distaste off her face as she believed these girls or white people thought Kunoichi were weaker than male shinobi. Fangirls only cared about looking good so they worried more about pampering themselves than training and instead of training real hard to keep their figure they decided to diet, which made their skills even worse. Man I hate fangirls, they are so loud, and they're worse than useless in the field, Naruto commented. I know they give Kunoichi a bad name, Sayuri said in response. I agree their screeching is so troublesome, especially that pink-haired one. Shikamaru put in from where he was standing near them. Yeah they hurt my ears with my advanced senses, and Akamaru is even worse of, said Kiba, as Akamaru was whimpering from inside his jacket. 
Sasuke had now reached where they were supposed to throw from. He picked up all the shuriken and kanai at once and threw them at the same time in attempt to show off. All but three hit the targets. Sasuke was now smiling smugly. Good job Sasuke, seven tenths that's the best so far. Mizuki praised. All right now Uchiha Sayuri it's your turn. Iruka called. Naruto patted her on the back before she left. Go get Am Sayuri Chan. I know you'll do great, he said encouragingly. Thanks Naruto san, I will, she said with a smile. She walked up confidently. A lot of the boys were looking at her admiringly as she did, and she noticed that Naruto got a slightly jealous look on his face when he saw them staring at her, for some reason that made her happy. For his part Naruto was wondering why he was feeling jealous. Why am I jealous? This is kinda like when I see men staring at Rin Chan. Why do I feel this way? Could I like them? He wondered, eyes widening in surprise when he realized this at the end. He suddenly felt his cheeks flooded with a slight heat that he managed to suppress. Sayuri got in place and picked up all the projectiles and threw them just as Sasuke had. They sailed through the air and nine of them found their mark. The class, barring Naruto, was shocked she had done better than Sasuke. They had expected him to be the better as he was the male. Meanwhile Sasuke himself was clenching his fists as his sister did better than him. Very well done Sayuri, nearly a perfect score. Aruka praised before calling the next name. Uzumaki Naruto, your turn, he called out. Naruto was at the back of the training field and he was leaning against the rail lazily. He made no motion to move, he was currently reading a book intently. Uruka gained a tick mark and lost his patience and shouted. Naruto, are you listening? He asked. Naruto looked up lazily and looked at Uruka. Oh hey sensei, I'm sorry, did you say something? He replied. In the distance a shout was heard that sounded something like, unyouthful hypnos. Everyone's jaws dropped at this and Uruka had his gapping in disbelief. Somewhere in Konoha a certain silver-haired female Anbu suddenly felt an inexplicable rush pride. Hum. I think Naruto just did something hip, she thought. Uruka finally pulled himself together and replied. Yes as a matter of fact it is your turn to throw the shuriken and kanai, he said. Oh, okay, Naruto replied nonchalantly as he walked forward, never taking his eyes off his book. If you looked closely you would see it was a book about sealing for beginners, written by Namikaze Minato. He reached the throwing line and put his book away with a sigh. He then picked up all ten objects. At this point a pink-haired banshee felt she should follow her mother's advice and put the blonde down, simultaneously raising the male Uchiha's ego. Naruto Baka, quit trying to be like Sasuke-kun, you'll never be as good as him, she screeched, making said blonde wince at her pitch. All the other fangirls quickly agreed. However his response was not what they expected, he laughed heartily before saying something shocking. You're right, I'll never be as good as him. He started, looking directly at her and away from the targets, making her grin in victory, and everyone else confused. Then he threw the shuriken and kanai all at once before finishing his sentence. I'll never be as good because I will always be better, he stated, as everyone saw with shock that he had hit all the targets dead center, without even looking. Everyone was had different reactions. Choji and Kiba and Akamaru cheered, howled for him. The fangirls cried out in rage. Sayuri looked at him with a slight blush, and surprisingly Hanada did the same. Sasuke was fuming now with a look of extreme anger. Mizuki was also angry, while Uruka was in awe. The last person to get 10 out of 10 on the first day was Uchiha Itachi. He thought, before he realized it was time to move on. Oh okay it's time for the spars, first up will be Ino vs Sakura, he said, causing all to move over to the taijutsu rings. That fight was a glorified playground scuffle. Then came a series of fights between civilians before the first interesting one. That was Choji versus Kiba. Both their clans were famous for taijutsu. The fight was well fought but Kiba ultimately won cause he had a slight speed advantage. Next was Shino versus Shikamaru. This was anticlimactic because Shikamaru gave up after a couple minutes. The second to last fight was interesting. It was between Hanada and Sayuri. Hanada fought valiantly but Sayuri was in a completely different league, she was probably better than Sasuke so there was no shame in losing to her. Okay last fight, this will be Uchiha Sasuke vs Uzumaki Naruto. Aruka read off the listing, 
Mizuki grinned viciously as he had made sure this one happened. Now you'll pay demon brat, there is no way you'll beat an Uchiha, he thought. Sasuke grinned as he believed he could get the loser back for embarrassing him twice today. His fangirls cheered him on as he stepped up across from Naruto. Well Dobi, you ready to pay for trying to embarrass an elite Uchiha? He shouted while smirking arrogantly. Naruto just sighed before moving his hand. Everyone tensed as Naruto put a hand into his ninja pouch, only to sweat drop as he pulled out his book and began reading. Huh funny, I always thought someone couldn't even be a full-fledged Uchiha till they had mastered the Katen. Gokaku no Jutsu, and from the lack of the Uchiha crest on your shirt, you haven't. He answered in a bored voice while glancing at Sasuke over his book. Sasuke's fists clenched in anger as Naruto pointed this out. Almost the entire class sans fangirls laughed at this, even Sayuri. Aruka himself was having trouble not chuckling, though he did crack a smile. Well, you gonna start this match Aruka sensei, I got things to do, people to train with. He said with slight amusement as he looked to the teacher who was containing his amusement. Hi, Hajime, he called before stepping back hurriedly. Sasuke went rushing forward with a roar and his fist cocked back. Naruto did nothing but turn a page in his book. Just as Sasuke was about to reach him, at the last possible moment Naruto lashed out with a kick that only the instructors could see. It connected with Sasuke's stomach. He went flying back out of the ring and hit a tree before falling unconscious. This earned cheers from all but Sasuke's fangirls who cried in outrage at what he had done to their Sasuke-kun. Iruka was in shock at the speed of Naruto's kick, as well as his reaction time. That was at least low genin speed, this kid is amazing. He thought, impressed. Mizuki had different thoughts, I can't believe the demon is this good, this sucks, he fumed. Winner, Uzumaki Naruto. Aruka called. Naruto Baka how dare you hurt Sasuke-kun, screeched Sakura. Well that's kinda the point of the spar, to win by hurting your opponent, if you can't even grasp this maybe you should be in civilian school, he replied calmly. Once Sasuke had woken up Aruka stepped forward with a clipboard. Okay I now have your written test scores he started. Okay here are the top 10 scores from 10 to Kiba, 19 thirtieths, he said causing Kiba to howl in victory. Next is Akamichi Choji, 20 thirtieths, he said making Choji to smile. Then it's Ino, Sakura, and Hanada, he continued rattling off names, Sakura looked outraged she had only placed 6th in the written. In 5th is Aburame Shino, followed by Nara Shikamaru, he called, Shino had no reaction whereas Shika just muttered troublesome. In third with an impressive 27 thirtieths is Uchiha Sasuke. He called, Sasuke was angry that again he wasn't number one. In second with an amazing score of 29 thirtieths is Uchiha Sayuri. He said happily as he liked her more than her bother even though it was the first day. And finally in first place, with a perfect score of 30 thirtieths is he looked at the name and smiled as he had expected this with how the student had done today in everything else. Uzumaki Naruto, he finished. Nobody that wasn't, A. A fangirl. B. Sasuke, R. C. Mizuki, was surprised. Okay now here is the rankings number 4 through 10, from 10 to 4. Sakura, Ino, Kiba, Choji, Shikamaru, Hinata, Shino, very good, he said. Now for the top 3. In the order of last to first, Uchiha Sasuke in third, Uchiha Sayuri in second, and the top spot goes to Uzumaki Naruto, congratulations, he praised. Sasuke was once again fuming. Today was supposed to be his day, he would start the academy and be the best, just as Itachi had, and finally prove he was just as good as his brother. Instead he didn't even come in second but third, worse, it was his sister who got second. He had always thought he was stronger despite the fact she had passed the fireball test and he hadn't. Sayuri and Naruto were happy. Sayuri because she recognized Naruto was way above simple genius, he was a once in a generation prodigy, and to place second to him by such a margin was a real accomplishment. Naruto was happy because Sayuri had placed second, him placing first wasn't all that surprising. Okay everyone I'll see you tomorrow to begin the official first day of class he said as most everyone cheered and ran off. Sasuke stormed off to return to the Uchiha compound. Naruto grabbed Sayuri's hand in excitement. Come on Sayuri-chan, I am going to take you to my secret training ground, he shouted excitedly as he began running towards said training ground. The end.
Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.